they finished the season on an offensive roll, and they feel like they can stay in a shootout with anyone. But their approach is a little bit different. They've had five different backs lead the team in rushing, 12 different receivers catch a touchdown pass. The one constant, though, has been their quarterback, Bart Hendricks. He's accounted for 30 touchdowns. He's been solid all year. Well, if defense is a subtle key to this game for Boise State, Coach Dirk Cutter is confident about his side's chances. Well, I am confident, and I don't, I don't mean to, to sound cocky or anything, but they've always, they've met every challenge we've put before them, and they're, they're a hungry group, and they have a lot of pride, and uh, I believe in our, in our defensive coaches, and I believe in our scheme, and you know, if, if we go down, we're going to go down swinging. Cardinal fans are in attendance here, but Boise State is unbeaten on their home field, the blue turf of Bronco Stadium. Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl coming up, but first to the studio, Reese Davis and John Makovic. Yeah! All right, Wayne, thanks a lot. And, John, as you look at this game, you have one of the smallest conferences in Division 1A, the Big West, taking on Conference USA, which really acquitted itself well in games outside the conference this year. Can a Big West team match up with a CUSA team? Uh, you have to start somewhere. That's no uh, question about it. I was in uh, coaching in Arizona in the WAC way back in the 70s, 25 years ago, and we couldn't get teams in bowl games, even though Arizona and Arizona State had great programs. And so they started a little game called the Fiesta Bowl in Tempe. You may have heard that one, okay? <laughs> well, 25 years later, we know what kind of game that is. And that's exactly where the Big West finds itself. Last year, Idaho beat Southern Mississippi. Everyone thought that was an upset. I think they'll prove that both of these teams can match up. And let's look at this. Louisville hasn't stopped many people either. And I think old linebackers Bud Herring and Michael Brown will be very busy stopping Boise State. Anytime I think about the Louisville defense, I think about that game against Army in which you know, fullback up the middle killed them all night. But that Louisville offense can certainly get it done. And you know we've had defensive-minded games that things don't change with Louisville and Boise State in this one. We may see defense through the whole bowl week. Get back out to Boise in a bit. Once a year, and only once a year, the men's warehouse has a sale. That's right, only once a year do we further reduce our everyday low prices an additional 20 to 40 percent. Of course, one sale a year may not seem like a lot, but if it's a sale as big as this one, well, once is enough. It takes a men's warehouse sale to beat a men's warehouse price. You're gonna like the way you look, I guarantee it. After five long years, the kids in the hall return to the live stage in a major North American theater tour. I'm catching your head. I'm catching. The Kids in the Hall 2000 Tour. All five original troop members bringing you all of your favorite characters. Evil! Evil! Same guys, new dresses. Slides! <laughs> adjust your uh, color on your set. That is a blue field. It is the famous blue field of Bronco Stadium in Boise, Idaho, Louisville, and Boise State in the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Well, Boise State season began under the cloud of tragic adversity, as Mike Leeson reports from the Boise State locker room. Wayne, not only do the Broncos want to cap off an undefeated season at home, but a major reason they want to win this football game is right here on the wall. This is Paul Raynham, a young freshman out of the Los Angeles area whose career at Boise State was short-lived. During August scrimmages, he fell on the field, suffered head injuries, and after spending five days in a hospital, lost his life. The Broncos have dedicated this entire season to Paul Raynham. This plaque right here travels with the team on the road, and for home games, it hangs right here on the wall. And before taking the field, each and every player touches this plaque in memory in honor of Paul Raynham. Wayne, just another motivating factor for the Broncos. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. Weather conditions, 23 degrees here in the valley. You're looking at the beautiful foothills. There's some good skiing up in those hills, I want to tell you. But there's a look at the situation. Uh, overcast skies, a little foggy at times here. Winds about five miles an hour. Louisville won the toss and will receive. Louisville in the white jerseys and Boise State in the home blue. And we're just about set for action. Zeke Parker averaged 24 yards per return with two returns for touchdowns this season. Brett Thompson will kick it away. And we're underway. Parker into traffic across the 25-yard line. It'll be first down just across... The 25 for the Louisville Cardinals. Let's take a look at the uh, lineups for you. And 
and for the Louisville offense, Frank Burrow, a thousand yard rusher, an incredible 17 rushing touchdowns this season. The tight end, Ivan Green, played football with Chris Redmond since the eighth grade. This is their last game together. Offensive tackle, Anthony Bird, the Cardinals' best offensive lineman, a co captain and first team, All Conference USA. The officiating crew from the Big 12. Steve Yusek is the man we'll be hearing from on any kind of penalties or transgressions. Hopefully won't hear from him a whole lot. Three receivers set to start, and they go to Frank Moreau. Breaks one tackle, but not the other. Johnson wraps him up with help from Malloy. Boise State defense and Mike Malloy at defensive end. His motor never stops. Leads the defensive line in tackles. The linebacker Brian Johnson, leader of the Bronco defense, suffered a leg injury in practice Tuesday, but is set to go today. Quarterback Dempsey Dees, the best pure covered corner on the Bronco squad. He will handle Arnold Jackson here today. That should be a great matchup to watch. Second down, about nine. Out of the shotgun and Redmond. Ivan Green slips a defender to get the first down out to the 38-yard uh, line, just short of the 40. Green Williams made the stop on the play for Boise State. Wayne, if you're Boise State's defense, you have faced offenses like this in formation and style, but you've never faced one that's had the skilled athletes that Louisville has. They'll spread them out, puts a lot of pressure on that secondary and those linebackers to stay with this talent man for man. Well, that's what uh, defensive coordinator Brett Guy told us in Boise State. We haven't seen this kind of a package. Zeke Parker, great speed. Led this team in yards per catch a year ago, but his explosiveness was demonstrated on special teams this season. Very little gain there. Second down coming up for Louisville. Nice job there by Damian Schilling coming up and making the sure tackle. When you spread a defense out and you play with four or five wide receivers, you have to be sure tacklers on defense because a missed tackle can turn into a big play. Louisville with trips to the top of your screen on second and nine. Moreau running room across the midfield marker and Frank Moreau rambles inside the 45 on a 19 yard gain. Damian Schilling made the stop. What a nice run by Frank Moreau coming right at you here. You see his lineman pull out and the, the Boise State defense just over pursue him. Moreau cuts it back up. There you see some of the reasons why he's gained almost 1300 yards on the ground this year. So does first down Louisville on the opening drive of the game. Five wide receivers set for the Cardinals. Penalty marker down for offsides. Quick toss on the slant. In the seam, this is LaBelle Boyd. He's down to about the 25-yard line. Ball came loose. Play had been whistled dead. Penalty marker down. It looked like uh, uh, one of the uh, defensive backs had jumped into the neutral zone for Boise State. 17-yard gain on that play. Offsides, the call against the Broncos. This is typical of this Louisville offense. They make a lot of big plays through the air, but they're not necessarily... When they're not necessarily long passes in the air, they're shorter passes, and these receivers, Lavelle Boyd, Arnold Jackson, Zeke Parker, and Ivan Green, they turn them into big plays. John L. Smith rarely lost to Boise State in his time out in this uh, area. Not a whole lot there. There's Louisville. Picks up short yardage on that particular carry. Frank Moreau on the... Thrust into the left side of the line, gain of two, and there is Dirk Cutter. Both coaches uh, hail from Boise, or, or not Boise, but the Idaho natives. Redmond over the top, going for Jackson, and the pass off the barn. Schilling that time had the coverage on uh, A.J., and that is uh, Arnold Jackson. When you saw Louisville that time go with a no-huddle offense, trying to come up to the line of scrimmage, snap the ball before Boise State could set their defense, Boise State's defensive coordinator Brent Guy told us he signals in. His defense does not huddle, never huddles. They signal it in. Everybody's responsible for looking over to the sideline to call the defense so the no-huddle offense shouldn't affect that. There's Brent Guy right there. Third down. Now third and about eight. Redmond has time. And the pass under shot is intended receivers. So the Boise State defense has held. Pass intended for Lavelle Boyd at the 20-yard line. Pretty good coverage that time by this Boise State secondary as Redmond had plenty of time to view the field, found nobody was open, then just threw the ball away. 
John Hilbert, 40-yard field goal attempt to get Louisville on the board. Bothered by a groin injury late in the season. Healthy now and had a good week of kicking out here. And he's got it on its way. It looks like it's right on target, and it is good. Louisville drives to a field goal to open the ball game. They lead Humanitarian Bowl 3-3-0. Three, three, City's New Year's sale with hundreds of markdowns throughout the store. All TVs 32 inches and larger, camcorders and appliances are on sale. All home audio loudspeakers, car audio, and mini systems are on sale too. Our knowledgeable sales counselors can answer all your questions and help you find just what you're looking for. Save throughout the store at Circuit City's New Year's sale. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Selsen Power. Doctors recommend Selsen Blue. So don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsen Power. A significant discovery in eye health may be lutein, a nutrient found in these healthy foods. Now Centrum has the only leading multivitamins with lutein to help maintain your precious sight. Centrum, Centrum Silver, now more complete with lutein. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 1999 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl is presented by Crucial Technology, proud sponsor of the 1999 Humanitarian Bowl, and in part by Ramada. At Ramada, you can always expect our personal best service. Randy Wright, Mike Gleason, great to have you back on this holiday week for the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Louisville out in front by the score of 3-0. Chris Redman on his opening drive of the postseason, 2 of 4, passing for 27 yards. And you get a look at the 9-play, 50-yard scoring drive, and John Hilbert with the uh, field goal to put the visitors from Louisville, Kentucky on the board first. Kickoff by Hilbert. And this one through the end zone and out of play. It'll be first down for Boise State. And the football will be out at the 20-yard line. Boise State offense, Davey Malathon, Broncos' leading rusher, is a physical back who played well down the stretch. The wide receiver, Lou Fanucci, a redshirt freshman, emerged as a playmaker late in the season. The offensive guard, Jeremy Mankins, is Boise State's best lineman and excellent run blocker. But these two teams make their yards and points, for the most part, through the air. Bart Hendricks, the junior out of Reno, Nevada, an athlete, a movement guy, good feet, and they will move the pocket for him as well here. Slot to the top of your screen, Malathon the long back. Davey Malathon trying to bounce it to the outside. Brown chased him out of the far side, but really the play was made by Courtney Dinkins, who forced it deep initially. Take a look at the Louisville defense. Up front, Mike Gantos, first team all-conference selection. The bandit linebacker is Michael Brown, best athlete on the Cardinal defense. And the quarterback, Rashad Holdman, top cover corner for Louisville. He played with Chris Redman and Ivan Green of Mayo High School in Louisville. Second down, about eight yards to go. Hendricks first pass. Wide open, Swilly. Jay Swilly out to the 46-yard line. Corey Wallace made the stop 24-yard gain. Nice job by Bart Hendricks dropping back, reading the coverage, and getting rid of the ball quickly. In a zone, you've got to get the ball to the receiver before he gets to the safeties. Nice job. Jay Swilly making that reception. He's been the most productive receiver as the season wound down for the Broncos. Yeah, he's their best receiver right now, according to the coaches. 
On the carry, Brock Forsey, who has had an excellent week of practice in preparation for this game. Forsey, a redshirt freshman from Meridian, India, Idaho, or I should say, Meridian, Idaho. Picks up a few yards across the midfield marker, and Boise State is now in enemy territory, so to speak. Dirk Cutter told us that he just kind of has a feel for these backs. They've had four different running backs lead their team in rushing for a game, and now you'll see Brock Forsey, Gavin Reed, Davey Malathong. Those three will rotate today. Whoever's got the hot hand will play the most. Forsey, the tail of the tandem, and the offset eye. Second down. Hendricks under immediate pressure. Hendricks now hit from behind and down it goes. Donovan Arp arrived on the scene. And may the uh, hit. He may have gotten a yard or two inside the 48-yard line. It'll be third down coming up for Boise State. But again, Randy, you see there evidence of the quick feet of Bart Hendricks. Uh, penalty marker down and face mask the call against Louisville. And that takes a nice play by the Louisville defense and turns it into a very negative play. Quick pressure back on Bart Hendricks. And this is what the coaches like about him. They can't really explain it. It's that quick escapability, just the one step up. And there, uh, it's hard to see the face mask there, but there you see the flag come in. And then as it was a personal foul, tacking 15 yards onto the end of that. So now the Broncos will set up shop at the 32-yard line of the Cardinals. You saw Donovan Art back there, number 79. The two tackles for Louisville, Donovan Art 79, Mike Anto 74. The defense plays the way those two linemen play. Double tight ends on the line. Four C cuts it back. Inside the 30, good, hard, decisive run by Forsey. Down to the 27-yard line. Here's a look at Brock Forsey. He came on late in the season, 313 yards of rushing offense. He gained six on that play. Forsey's just the freshman, the young back of the three. Pretty good size, 5'11", 190 pounds, and they think he's just got great potential, good talent. Former walk-on, didn't take him long during the scholarship. Again, one wide receiver set here. That's Fanuki at the bottom of your screen. On second down and four. Penalty markers down. Forsey for very little into the middle of the line. I believe that uh, the Cardinals jumped into the neutral zone. Quick snap by the center, Scott Huff. Helped draw that flag. Offsides the call against the Cardinal. Mike Leeson is with us on the sidelines. Mike, I understand John L. Smith, the head coach at Louisville, is trying to elicit some local support for his team. That's right. When last year at the Motor City Bowl, uh, about 13,000 Louisville fans went up to the Motor City Bowl in Pontiac, Michigan. Well, John L. Smith, the coaching at Idaho, obviously Boise is a little bit farther than Pontiac, Michigan, so they came out here and they took out full-page ads <laughs> trying to round up Vandal fans. And I asked him, I said, you know, do the Boise fans really dislike you that much? He says, no, they hate me. As a matter of fact, they hate me so much, I wouldn't stand too close to him, right? <laughs> All right, Mike. Off that penalty, it's a first down. Off the penalty against Louisville. First down for Boise State. 3-0 Louisville, early going in this first quarter. But Boise State on the drive. Hendricks off play action, under some pressure, steps up. To the end zone off the hands of Mike Davison, incomplete. He appeared to have the coverage or at least a half step on the coverage of Corey Wallace down the side along with Anthony Roundtree. Nice job by Bart Hendricks, though, stepping up in the pocket. He's got a very good feel for when the pressure's coming from the outside. Here you see Mike Davison runs a nice route, sells the post to the inside, cuts back to the outside, and just a little better throw here would have been six points. Second down and ten. That's Putzier in the slot on the bottom of your screen. They're going on the ground. Gavin Reed made the first man miss, but not the second and third as they stack him up. Very short gain. Otis Floyd, the defensive end, led the way for the Cardinals' defense. So it'll be third down coming up for Boise State. Gavin Reed may be the most talented player on the team, much less on the offense. He's very athletic. He's an excellent special teams player. Runs a 4-4, though he's had a little bit of an inconsistent season. They're hoping he can play with one of his up games today, not one of his down games. Yeah, he's had some injury problems over the course of the campaign. Third down. Long count by Hendricks. May have drawn an offsides again. 
Hendricks pass for Faduki thrown to the end zone and another flag thrown in the middle of the defensive secondary. So got two flags now, one on the far side. May have been for a violation of the neutral zone by Louisville and then perhaps a pass interference penalty or hold downfield. I think you're right, Wayne. I think both of these are going to go against the Cardinals and Boise State's going to have their choice. Uh, should choose whether it's an interference or a defensive holding. That should be the one that they take. Should give them a first down. So penalties have aided the Broncos on this drive. And they're going to mark it off against Outside, Louisville. On a defense. It's declined. Holding on a defense. Ten-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Automatic first down to the 12-yard line of Louisville. When it's easy to think that because Boise State doesn't run the same style of offense, the four and five wideouts, that they're not a very spread out offense. They are. They just get to it different ways. Here's a look at the penalty story I mentioned a moment ago. Single wide receiver now in the ball game, Billy Wingfield. Here comes Brock Forsey inside the 10-yard line to about the nine. Louisville showing that good speed defensively, good lateral speed on their defense. Sexton uh, in on that stop with Rashad Harris, also over there, Antonio Roundfree. Watch the left side here of the Boise State line. They'll come off and try and seal and give Brock Forsey the corner. Luba really does a pretty nice job, though, of getting some penetration in the pursuit. It doesn't give Forsey much room to turn that ball up. Second down, about seven yards to go. Again, single wide receiver set. Hendricks rolling. A little misdirection, takes it himself inside the five-yard line to the four. Touchdown saving tackle made by Michael Brown. Wayne, the most important thing, watch how quickly Hendricks gets his head around. Right there, he gets it around. He sees the pressure coming from the outside. Now he knows he's got to turn it back up. I don't know how fast he is, but I tell you, I think he's pretty quick, and he has avoided the tackle, which would have been a sack, three or four times already. In addition to his quickness, Randy, he has a feel for pressure. You take a look at this drive right here. And again, we mentioned three penalties have aided it. Hendricks with a two-wide receiver set, double tight ends, and this is Gavin Reed, and he is met in the hole and turned back. Donovan Arp on the interior of the defensive front for the Louisville Cardinals. He denies him a first down, which would have been at the two-yard line. And it becomes a fourth down for Boise State. Well, as big as that Boise State offensive line is, three, uh, four of their five starters over 300 pounds, they have not been able to move that Louisville defensive line off the line of scrimmage. And again, that was a key stop there. You mentioned Arp and Gantos, the two defensive tackles. They really key. The up front seven defense for Louisville. And now Hendricks needs a timeout. Seven minutes left to be played here in Boise. First quarter, Louisville in the lead, but Boise State threatening. Western City. left a few sacks behind. The Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Clemson, Mississippi State at 7.30, Thursday on ESPN. 
Bring the action home with ESPN Full Court. With over 450 college basketball games, you'll get to watch your favorite teams and conferences. ESPN Full Court, only on pay-per-view. To order, call your cable company, DirecTV, or Dish Network. Dirk Cutter, head coach at Boise State, looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down, about a yard to go for a first down. A little surprised here, Wayne, that they are going for it. Points are at an optimum today. You've got to be able to get them against this Louisville offense. They're going now. The question, are they going for the first down or trying to get the touchdown? It is fourth down, about a yard to go from the three. They split the backfield. A long count by Hendricks. They may be just trying. No, Hendricks is going to take it on an option. He's got the touchdown. part of their regular package, Randy, and of course with the quick feet of this quarterback and his decision-making ability, not a bad call. Not at all, and it's a more than just a trinkle of their offense. Bart Hendricks does a nice job running it. When you spread the defense out like they did with their shift, you get people thinking pass. He did a nice job getting it in the end zone. Nick Kaliakai, redshirt freshman from Kaiser, Oregon, puts through the extra point. And Boise State responds with their opening drive on offense. 6.56 to go, first quarter, 7-3 to three Broncos. Once a year and only once a year, the men's warehouse has a sale. That's right. Only once a year do we further reduce our everyday low prices an additional 20 to 40 percent. Of course, one sale a year may not seem like a lot. But if it's a sale as big as this one, well, once is enough. It takes a men's warehouse sale to beat a men's warehouse price. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Here we go now. Over six billion people. Seen evil, can evil do this for Over 6,000 languages. Go on, boy. One planet. Hey, it's your world. Ian and Justine just want to show you around. So break away with Lonely Planet, weeknights at 8, only on the Travel Channel. Get off the beaten path with Lonely Planet, right here on Cox Communications. Hockey is a game of control played on an uncontrollable surface. It can be ugly and beautiful in the same moment. The players are drenched in sweat as they play on a sheet of ice. The speed of the game is astonishing, and yet it can come to a sudden halt. It is a game of respect in a sport that is too often disrespected. The NHL on ESPN. This is the game. Boise State leading 7-3. Bart Hendricks three-yard touchdown run to camp an 11-play 80-yard drive. Three cardinal penalties involved in that drive as well. Hendricks, three of nine passing. Nice job, Wayne, calling the option for the first time. It was a play the Swivel defense had not seen yet today. You should take a look at uh, this play again. We talked about the defensive line. Look here at the left guard, Willie Van Gorder, how he gets the block on 74. Mike Gantos to the outside. That allows Hendricks to cut right behind him and get clearly the first down, the touchdown was the blessing. And easy to see how Bart Hendricks really triggers this offense. I mentioned three of nine, three carries, nine yards rushing, one of two passing. Hendricks huge in that drive for Boise State. Zeke Parker. Parker still on his feet to the outside. Boy, he does have some jets, doesn't he? Over to make the stop on the play, Gavin Reed. He also has some Jets. College football bowl game triple header coming up on ESPN. Insight.com Bowl. The Colorado Buffaloes, Boston College. Followed by the Exo Liberty Bowl. Colorado State Rams in 14th ranked Southern Mississippi. Southern Miss was here last year. The Sanford Independence Bowl has Mississippi and Oklahoma. The Sooners making their first bowl appearance since 1994. ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. Hendricks, phone home. First play from scrimmage on this drive, out to about uh, the 36-yard line. Frank Moreau on the carry. 
Moreau, 233 rushing attempts. And this is his first full season as a starter. He was an on-again, off-again starter throughout his career. He has four carries today and 25 yards. He came in as a running back, about 240 pounds, and John L. Smith told him, only Ron Dean can play that high. you got to get down into the 220s. A low snap out of the gun. Pass tipped in the air, incomplete. Pass was tipped either by Malloy or by Matt Hill. When you have a bad snap, like we see here, it forces the quarterback to take his eyes off of the coverage. And in a quick rhythm offense like this, that can be devastating. As you saw, it gave the chance for the defensive linemen to get some penetration, get their hands up through the timing line. Matt Hill is 6'6". He could play tonight against Cincinnati in the basketball game. <laughs> they may need him. Redmond drills his man. He's got a first down across the 45-yard line. Arnold Jackson with his first reception of the day, 11-yard gain. Well, his first reception, as you said, I would expect many more to come. He is the guy, 101 receptions to go on top of 90 that he had last year. Redmond, no matter how many times you hit him or knock him down, you're not going to be able to rattle him. He has got such great composure back there in the pocket, a key third down conversion. Arnold right Jackson was saying that he loves the blue turf, feels he's a lot quicker on this blue turf. He's quick on any kind of turf anyway. Short drop, Redmond, the ball tipped in the air by Malloy, caught on the play by Moreau. Frank Moreau gets about three yards out of it for Louisville. And it'll be second down coming up, so near a disaster averted there. A tip by Mike Malloy. Well, it's hard to get to the quarterback on a three-step drop, so if you're a defensive lineman, you got to get your hands up. There, if you're Frank Moreau, you've got to go at the knees of that defensive lineman, get his yep. arms down. You can't stand there and block him standing up. <laughs> you've got to get his arm. You're right. You've got to get him down. But Frank and Johnny on the spot to catch a three-yard reception. You're not going to block the guy. You better do something good. Four, four receivers set now for Redmond, who may be changing the play. On second down, under a blitz. Redmond able to spin away. Penalty marker is down. Delay of game apparently took too much time, did the Cardinals. Yep, delay of game. Louisville looks just a little bit disjointed offensively here in the early going of this one. Well, I, I think we thought the crowd would... On the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. We thought the crowd could be a factor so far in this first quarter. We've seen that, and with Boise State getting the lead, it's going to be more of a factor. We are in the... Blue Sky Country on the blue turf of Bronco Stadium, Boise, Idaho. Wayne Larrabee along with Randy Wright, Mike Leeson. And second down now. Pass under shot. The intended receiver, Lavelle Boyd. Redmond does not look very sharp yet. And I underline the word yet. These guys have a tendency to warm up, you guys, as quarterbacks as the game goes along. Well, it, it may take a little longer to warm up today, and that was one thing that Dirk Cutter couldn't predict with today's game. He was concerned about the speed in the passing game and turnovers, but he also thought the cold weather was going to affect the offense and the way both teams throw the ball. And I'd say so far, Wayne, it's affected Chris Redmond more than it has Bart Hendricks. 25% on third and long. This qualifies third and 12. Blitz coming from the corner. Redmond able to elude. And then throws it deep, and he's got Arnold Jackson ahead of the field. Jackson for the touchdown. 54-yard pass play. They blitzed Shenard Hartz off the corner of the defense. Redmond able to escape and find Jackson wide open downfield. What a nice job by Redmond, knowing that the blitz was coming from his backside. When he, he did that John Elway spin away, where you turn your back to the line of scrimmage, you go towards where the blitz is coming from. Once you get by that guy, there's nobody else there, and the presence of mind to look downfield and found a streaking Arnold Jackson wide open. John Hilbert for the point after. And penalty markers down. Penalty markers down on this play here. Oh, there's Arnold Jackson having a seat on the bench. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. So they'll be forced to try this extra point again. Six plays, 67 yards. And Louisville starting to feel nice and warm here in this cold temperature. 
of Boise. And look at Redmond. There's that Elway spin you were talking about, Randy. And then he just plants his feet, looks downfield, and when you've got a receiver this open, it makes it a much easier <laughs> throw. There's Chris Redmond. He knows he's got his man. A little longer PAT. And it is good. So John Hilbert. With a point after touchdown, Louisville has scored on its first two possessions. Opening drive of the game resulting in a field goal, and then this one goes the distance for the touchdown. Take a look right here. You see number three, Shenard Hart. That's the corner that Redmond is looking at. He comes in unblocked because Moreau's got to pick up the man coming inside, and as he breaks free, there's nobody else there. Redmond does a nice job of keeping his poise, and then, I, you know, no matter how open Jackson is, that was a pretty good throw. Mm -hmm. Especially when you consider it looked like he was just trying to throw the ball away. <laughs> Coming up, the Outback Bowl. Purdue Bonnerbankers and Georgia Bulldogs. New Year's Day, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Coverage begins with Bowl Game Day presented by Outback Steakhouse at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 a.m. Pacific Time. And here you see Drew Brees as he start his Heisman run next year in this game. I would think he does. ESPN.com, part of Go Network. Go.com. There's a look at the drive. 67 yards, 54 of it on that one bomb from Chris Redmond to Arnold Jackson, who caught 101 passes this season. So John L. Smith and his kids have enjoyed their week here in Idaho. Been a lot of fun on some snowmobiles. We may be able to show you that earlier this week. John Hilbert restarting the game. drive kick. Brock Forsey lets it get by him into the end zone and Boise State will start out of the 20-yard line. Well, neither defense has stopped the offense yet. <laughs> three offensive possessions and we've had three scores. A field goal, a couple of touchdowns. Back to the sidelines, Mike Gleason. Mike? Well, Wayne, the quarterback for Boise State to Bart Hendricks has really fought off a lot of adversity. As a matter of fact, the local print media was really hard on him. It was printed that he would never lead the Broncos to a conference championship. And, of course, he's done that. And he's, what, threw 22 touchdowns, or ran for eight. And, of course, he already has a touchdown here this afternoon. So this is a big game, a big season for Bart Hendricks, Wayne. Brent Myers, the offensive coordinator. Dirk Cutter, the head coach, both mentioned the mental toughness of Bart Hendricks is a big part of his makeup. First down to the 20-yard line for the Broncos, who not trail 10-7. Hendricks off play action. Beautiful throw. Wingfield at the 45-yard line. 25-yard gain to a first down. Courtney Dinkins had the stop. When we talked earlier about the way that Boise State will spread the ball around, 12 different receivers had caught a touchdown pass. 16 have caught a pass. Wingfield came on later in the season. When you get this kind of time to throw, you run a nice route, you're going to get open like that. And Hendricks has shown us that he can get the ball, put the ball right on the money. Here's a look at uh, Billy Wingfield heading to the sidelines. First down of the 45. Hendricks with a long count. And here's Malathon, nowhere to go on the outside, and he did well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, they cut it off very well. Gantos initially, and Devon Thomas, the defensive end, made sure the play stayed inside. Take a look at the running back by committee here. And again, the most yards rushing for any single individual was Davey Malathon with 577 yards rushing. But take a look at the leading rushers in the last three games. And Wayne, they've only had three games this year where a back, one of those backs being Hendricks, has gone over 100 yards. So it's not a big part of the offense, but they need to sprinkle it in. Hendricks has time and an open receiver. Jay Swilly out of bounds, 36 yard line. In Louisville territory, they mark it to the 35, a 20-yard gain. Swilly, as a redshirt freshman, came on late in the year. What they like best about him is he's an excellent possession receiver. He'll go over the middle and make the tough catch. This time he goes to the outside, does a nice job of catching it and turning it up. But they are not afraid to go to this guy over the middle or on third downs. Nor is Boise State afraid of a deficit of 10-7. They outscore their opponents by a whopping 16 points a game in their seven home games on this field this season. 
But I don't think they see, they've seen the likes of a Louisville. And the reverse to Davidson. He's got Swan out in front. Swan fails to execute a block. Davidson makes it on his own. And nearly makes a first down, although they say he stepped out apparently in the 30-yard line. So does a gain of five yards. Courtney Dinkins over there to escort him to the chalk marks. This is where you're going to see Louisville maybe have a bit of an advantage is when Boise State tries to run east and west, the speed of this Louisville defense. There you see all the white jerseys over there. Pretty good blocking at the point of attack, but that speed just brings too many of those guys over there. That's why we've seen Boise State, without much success, they'll try to run in the middle. Second down and five. Not a whole lot there off tackle. Devon Thomas, again, the man who closed the gap. And also in on that tackle is Reggie Hartgrove on the interior portion of the line. They will bring in uh, probably, they'll use about eight defensive linemen on this front for Louisville. It's been the most banged up part of their defense is that front seven, front eight. You see Donovan Arthur and Mike Gantos already making an impact here. But the backups will get their fair share of playing time also. Third down and four. Hendricks got his man for a first down. Mike Davison inside the 25. And boy, does he draw a crowd. First down near the 21-yard line. Boise State there attack Rashad Holman, number two for Louisville. He is the best of the cornerbacks in, in, in the entire defensive backs for Louisville. Comes into today's game with five interceptions, but Boise State doesn't seem to be shying away from him as they're throwing the ball where their offense dictates, not necessarily where the defense does. Take a look at what Boise State does on first downs. That's how you get on a roll offensively, Randy. <laughs> you get seven a, a pop on first down, and you're in good shape. Makes second down a lot easier to call. Hendricks play action. They roll the pocket a bit. He's got a receiver open off the hands of his big tight end, Dave Stahelski, the senior out of Marysville, Washington. Bart knew he could have made that a lot easier catch for the big guy. Looked like he rushed the throw a little bit when he didn't have to. He doesn't have a lot of pressure in his face. Steps up in the pocket nicely and throws the ball a little bit off target when Stahelski was wide open right there. Maybe if he had set his feet a little bit longer when he had the time, he could have thrown a better pass. Second and ten coming up. Hendricks, four of six, 75 yards passing. Coming up on two minutes to go in this first quarter. Three receivers set. Davison in motion. They fake the reverse. Hendricks on the pitch. Here comes Gavin Reed inside the 20-yard line. Out of bounds, just short of the 18. Jeremy Collins forced him out of the far side. So again, uh, Boise State intent upon getting to the outside. And we've got a, an injured Bronco down to the field. Shea Swan, the fullback, who was out in front leading that play. Make that Gavin Reed. Gavin Reed down on the field. Take a look and see if we can see what happened. There you see 29 Reed on the outside getting the pitch there. Nice job on the option. Reed gets to the outside, cuts up, and he just gets trampled on. Take a look at this. See if we can watch his head. And the helmet, he may have gotten hit by the knee of his lineman. His own man right yeah. there, Shea Swan, 39. Looked like he put his knee right into the head. And Gavin Reed may be shaken up with a self-imposed injury. I beg your pardon, I didn't mean to uh, call Shea Swan a lineman. He is a fullback, although some fullbacks are built like linemen, and he looked like one of them. <laughs> they use him like a lineman. They yeah. use him as a blocker. Only five carries and eight receptions coming into today for the entire season. So he's a blocker back. Gavin Reed is a big part of this offense, and they're going to help him over to the bench. Coming up, the Chick-fil-A Beach Bowl on ESPN. Clemson Tigers, Mississippi State Bulldogs tonight, 7.30 from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Georgia. Clemson 6-5 and five after a, a poor season the previous year. Tommy Bowden, who led Tulane to an unbeaten season a year ago, head coach at Clemson, has him bowling after just one year. ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. On third down, Hendricks, quarterback draw. He alerts a couple of defenders. He might get to the end zone, and he's inside the five. I'll tell you what, they have had him surrounded today, but have not 
been able to wrap him up. It's a first and goal of the four-yard line, 14-yard camper. You'll see 92 Michael Josiah have a clear shot right there, and Hendricks just runs right by him. And I agree with you, Wayne. The white jerseys have done a nice job of surrounding him. Hendricks has made his yards running up the middle and breaking some tackles. So does first and goal. In the final two minutes of this first quarter, there's the present drive. And off play action, Hendricks going to his fullback, Shea Swan, touchdown! Four-yard touchdown pass, Shea Swan. We just talked about him not being a big part of the offense with only <laughs> five carries and eight receptions. However, that being his ninth reception, his second touchdown. When you're running the ball well, play action works, nice job of selling the run, the linebackers step up, and Shea Swan just slipped right behind him, wide open. Well, Louisville was thinking like we were. They never used the fullback a whole lot <laughs> or anything more than blocking. They used him as a receiver there. The extra point by Kaliakai is good. All Big West kicker, walk-on freshman out of Kaiser, Oregon. Shea Swan reaches the end zone off the deft passing touch of Bart Hendricks. And Boise State recaptures the lead in a seesaw first quarter. Mike Leeson with us on the sidelines. Mike, what do you have for us? Well, when we're joined by Scott Shaner, the general manager of a Crucial Technology, of course, it's the Crucial Humanitarian Bowl. And, uh, Scott, give us some background on Crucial Technology. Crucial Technology is the division of Micron Technology, which is the largest employer in the state. And what we do is we sell memory upgrades, computer memory upgrades, direct end users, mostly via the Internet. That's why Crucial.com. In the background, why you wanted to sponsor a bowl game. I know the people out here are really proud of this game. Uh, the Humanitarian Bowl is a big event in Boise. And there wasn't a sponsor. Actually, we just jumped in about six weeks ago. It's a huge event here in Boise. It's a great day in Boise, and we're just proud to be a title sponsor. All right, Scott. Uh, of course, it's a little cloudy today, Wayne, but this is really a beautiful area, as you could attest to last year when it was 52 degrees and sunny. Let's go back upstairs. No question about it, Mike. This is a gorgeous state, a beautiful place to live, and uh, we've had the pleasure of coming out here, Randy Wright and myself, and our crew for the past couple of seasons, and it has been wonderful. Man of the hour at the moment, I should say man of the moment, Shea Swan. Boise State recaptures the lead 14 to 10 and let the track meet begin, partner. I don't know if either <laughs> one of these teams brought their punter. I don't think so. If they did, it may have been a race, a wasted spot on the plane. Parker. Has a seam. Off to the races. Zeke Parker. He's gone. season for Zeke Parker. We're going to see scoring in many ways here today. I can guarantee you that much with these two teams. Well, we knew Louisville had the speed at the skilled position, and Zeke Parker, the third wideout that starts for this Louisville team, has done it before in the special teams, and again here, and when you can get your special teams to contribute with such a potent offense led by Redmond, it just adds to what you can do. Gilbert, right down the middle with the point after touchdown. And Louisville didn't take long for the Cardinals to jump back on top. 18 seconds is all it took for Zeke Parker to go 91 yards for a touchdown off the kickoff return. It's 17 to 14 Louisville. And Dirk Cutter knows he's got his work cut out for him. Let's go, kick off team! Take a look here. When you're on the return team, here is Justin Thomas, number 47. He's the lead blocker for Parker. When he can get through the hole untouched, it allows him to block the safety, which he does right there. And when your lead blocker gets through the hole and can block the safety, does a nice job, then you're going to get a huge return as Parker turns it all the way into a touchdown. Take a look at this. He comes storming right into your living room. How about that? I'll tell you what, this game is living up to the billing. This has always been a high-scoring affair. We saw a great game here last year between Idaho and Southern Miss, and we're off to a flying start here this season. We saw the, the Idaho Vandals return a kickoff for a touchdown last year. Got them back into the game when they were down 7-0.
John Hilbert, sixth year senior from Boonville, Indiana. Suffered a devastating groin injury late in the season. Missed the final game against Southern Miss, but has come back in time for this bowl game. His final collegiate action. Ferris. Across the 20. Nice cutback move near the 30-yard line. Forget last year's humanitarian bowl was a high-scoring affair, matching Southern Miss and Idaho. The Vandals tied the game 7-7. Jerome Thomas returned this kickoff. How about this? 98 yards. Look at these cutbacks to pay dirt on a beautiful sunny day here in Boise, and that was pretty much the start of things. With six and a half minutes remaining in the game, Derek Nix tied the contest 35 apiece with his third touchdown of the day. But crowd favored Idaho scored the winning touchdown two minutes later. 28-yard touchdown pass. John Wells, Brian Prestamonico, the final. Idaho 42, Cincinnati 35. <laughs> Hendricks to the air. Got a man wide open. Zeb puts in. that no matter what happens as an offense stands on the sideline, they're going to come out with confidence and come out and continue to attack and put the ball up in the air. Nice job by Hendricks. They've had this play open before. This time, Pooch Sear, wide open, does a nice job of catching it. And he, as a former tight end, led the team in receiving this year with 39. He's got great hands. They moved him to wide out. He's done so well, but he's not afraid to run you over. From Eagle, Idaho. Hendricks coming back for it. Davison makes the catch on a good tackle on the flank of the defense. Boy, Mike Brown and coaches talked about him. He is maybe the best athlete on this defense. Redshirt freshman out of Louisville. And he will cover the slot receiver, and he's got a challenge today in Davison. He's got a challenge covering any and all of these receivers, but as you said, maybe the best player on their team. A redshirt freshman. He's an athlete. He has got speed. He's, he was a running back in high school. He gained over 2,000 yards as a senior as a running back. Here, he's a defensive bandit, kind of their strong safety line backer type and he is a good one four receivers set second and 12 loss of two on the previous play and the first quarter comes to a close well it's been a shootout so far and the last bullet fired was by this man zeke parker all the way to give louisville the lead at the end of one why choose between airline miles and hotel points when only hilton gives you both it's a fast way to earn a free vacation. It happens at the Hilton. For reservations, call 1-800-HILTONS. This is Boise State University, shaped by its location in one of America's most dynamic small cities, located in the midst of an unsurpassed natural environment. Boise State is a place where students connect to the world around them, from high technology to high culture, where student opportunities abound in an extensive internship program, where students use the great western outdoors as their classroom and as their playground. Boise State University, real education for the real world. There has never been anything like The Sopranos on TV. The greatest work of American popular culture of the last quarter century. Groundbreaking. Brilliant. A phenomenon. Engrossing. First class. Four stars. Perfect. A masterpiece. What's that, a threat? No, Tony, it's a rave review. How are you feeling now? Good, I'm fine. Back at work. <laughs> Every day he works on his speed, he works on his agility, and he works on his power. So when Sunday comes around, he makes the other team work. K-Swiss. What if your car slips off the road in Slippery Rock? Or you need the name of a mechanic in Mechanicsville? Well, if your car is insured by State Farm, just look up the local State Farm agent. 
almost anywhere you travel, whether it's a big metropolis or just a little one. A good neighbor is always nearby to help. So if your car gets stolen in Thief River Falls, or you have some trouble in paradise, hey, don't worry about it. State Farm is there. Looking for a simple weekend getaway? Or the vacation of a lifetime? It happens at the Hilton. For reservations at more than 400 Hiltons worldwide, call 1-800-HILTONS. 31 points in just 15 minutes. It's in the hands of the offenses here today. That's Brett Myers. The offensive coordinator under head coach Dirk Cutter at Boise State. His team on the drive with a second down of the 35-yard line, second and 12. Hendricks. And trying to hit a pretty well-covered uh, tight end on the play, Dave Stahelski. Looked like he drew some double coverage of the 30-yard line. They take a look at the first quarter numbers. Boy, the passing yards, how about that? Much of it through the air. Uh, Hendricks, 7 of 9, passing 114 yards. Redmond, 5 of 9, 96 yards passing. And with the cold weather, the coldest game today that either one of these two teams have played in this year. We really haven't seen many turnovers, no fumbles, no bobbles, snaps. Teams, both teams doing a nice job. Yeah, the weather usually much warmer in Boise than it is here today, around 20 degrees today. Well, it was 52 here last January, or so you should say last December. Hendricks and his receiver, Davison may have crossed signals there. Davison slipped and fell. He was underneath the uh, coverage of Anthony Floyd, the true freshman nickelback. Take a look at it in the ISO. Nice job of setting this play up by Hendricks and the offensive line. There you see Holman doing a pretty good job of making contact early, and Davison just lost his balance there. Yeah. Looked like Holman wasn't biting on the fake, though, and had that pretty well covered. Beg your pardon. It was Holman on the coverage, and looked to me like the receiver just lost his footing on his own for the most part. Opening minute of play, second quarter. And a timeout called on the field. Back and forth we go. Louisville leading at the moment, 17-14 in the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. CD-ROM from Strong Investments that can help keep your retirement dreams from slipping away. Just call 1-888-2-STRONG and it's yours free. You're one call away from a strong portfolio. A significant discovery in eye health may be lutein, a nutrient found in these healthy foods. Now Centrum has the only leading multivitamins with lutein to help maintain your precious sight. Centrum, Centrum Silver, now more complete with lutein. They're not coming out. We're going in to get them. They're always hot. They're always sweating. It's a cat and mouse game. We have some of the hottest detectives on the street to switch antiperspirant. Degree ultra dry. Body heat activated. Does this work? When your body heat rises, Degree's powerful ultra dry form releases extra protection when you need it most. When the pressure is on, the heat is on. Degree kept up with me. He kept me dry. Degree kicks back. Degree ultra dry. That stuff kicks in and takes care of business. Your body heat turns it on. Book them. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of the 1999 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl is brought to you by Degree, the body heat activated antiperspirant. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Mike Gleason back in Boise. Fourth down. Boise State on the drive. Hendricks intended for Swilly. Pass over thrown incomplete on fourth and 12. So Lobo will take over at the 35 yard line. That's the first time an offense has been stopped without points. Well, the Boise State right in the middle of the punt. You go for it. You try the field goal. Felt they had had that pattern open earlier in this game and had hit it. This time, nice coverage by Louisville, and Hendricks really had no place to go. As you see Swilly being talked to there on the sideline, he's got to create the separation. He's got to get himself open to give his quarterback a place to throw the ball. 
Jackson and Parker, good speed and quickness to the top of your screen. Redmond starts in the shotgun, and he runs it with Moreau. To the 40-yard line, a gain of about five yards. Matt Hill, principal defender on the play for Boise State. Moreau has really done a nice job stepping up in this, his fifth season, but his first as a full-time starter. Had split time the last couple of years, put together a nice season, and as you mentioned earlier, winning 17 touchdowns on the ground. Had a torn ACL in 1996, and it took him almost two years to come back from that injury. Second down. Ball tipped up into the air, incomplete for They brought the blitz with effectiveness from the safety, Shenard Hartz. My goodness, he's come off the flank a couple of times, Randy, and does he have some quicks about him? And that's the kind of defense that Brent Guy, their defense coordinator, wants to play. Bring people, keep coming, change things up so Redmond doesn't know where they're going to come from. Hartz does a nice job realizing he wasn't going to get to Redmond, jumping up, getting his hands up there. And Redmond has got to start doing a better job of either looking off his receivers or pumping with a fake and getting those hands out of his, his passing lanes so he can get the ball past the line of scrimmage. Third deflected pass of the day for Redmond. Now on third down under a blitz again. Hit as he throws it over the middle. Arnold makes the catch. Arnold Jackson in traffic. Boy, and he had glove-like coverage on him from the linebacker Kareem Williams. And did Redmond thread the needle? Gain of eight yards, first down near the 48-yard line. And this is what Louisville fans have come to expect from Chris Redmond. Standing in the pocket, holding on to the ball for the last possible second, knowing he's going to take the hit, but yet delivering a perfect pass to a well-covered receiver. The numbers on Redmond. He looks to the air again, and it's dropped on the flank. Zeke Parker had it, looked up field, and forgot it. <laughs> Dropped it up. Oh, my. Gets a little pat on the back for the official. And Zeke Parker was the receiver that Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator, thought would step forward today. He hasn't played a lot. Only 20 receptions coming in. He's got great speed. And knowing that Boise State would try and take away Arnold Jackson, he expects Parker to step up and have a better game. And Randy, despite his speed, his longest reception coming into today's game was 22 yards. Last year, he averaged 18.7 yards per reception. Redmond changing the play at the line. Has a three-receiver set on second down. Ball nearly picked away. Glove-like coverage. Ross Ferris, the safety, on the antenna receiver, Lavelle Boyd. Nice coverage by Ross Ferris. When you're only running a five or six yard route, it's up to the receiver to sell the route and create separation. Here you see Ferris going right out there. Lavelle Boyd, number 12, rounds the pattern, never makes a sharp cut. And when you round it, you give the defensive back room to cut right underneath you, and that's what Ferris did. Third and 10, Lobo. for the first down. Turned away near the 47-yard line of Boise State. Dempsey Dees on the coverage. Penalty marker down on the play. We had a flag that came in very late, Wayne. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a personal foul or something after the whistle was blown dead against Boise State. Personal foul. Face mask on a defense. A costly penalty, to say the least. And the football now up near the 32-yard line of Boise State. The Boise State had them stopped, would have put them in a punting situation, but that face mask, the dead ball happened away from the play, totally unnecessary. It was in the backfield, close to where Redmond was. Just gives Louisville another chance. Totally unnecessary. First penalty of the day against Boise State. Louisville trying to cash in. From the Bronco, 32. Five receivers set, naked gun. Redmond hit as he pops it over the right side, and it's intercepted and down the sideline. Chenard Hart, he's going to go all the way. Ten, five, touchdown. season that's 
their 15th interception of the campaign. Matt Malloy put some pressure on from his defensive end spot. And Wayne, that's one of the criticisms of Chris Redman. He is so tough, he'll stand in that pocket to the last possible second. Because he does that, he takes a lot of hits while he's trying to get rid of the ball, and they cause the ball to go in goofy directions, and they lead to interceptions, and that's what we saw there. 80-yard interception return for the touchdown. Goliakai with the extra point. Boise State jumps back on top. 80-yard return by Shenard Hartz, and the Broncos lead by four. Sega Dreamcast, wired to the net by AT&T. Here's the defense you'll be facing Sunday. Hey, that's Terrell's mom. <laughs> hey, it's Terrell. He's eating chunky soup. <laughs> the... Hi, baby. Uh... You always love that chunky chicken noodle. Well, now it's heartier than ever to fill you up right with big chunks of chicken and veggies and bigger noodles. <laughs> <laughs> Handles chunky chicken noodle. It's better than ever. Oh, the tragedy of using a dandruff shampoo. Note how isolated it makes people feel. Note its unpleasant smell. The absence of rich lather. Note its name. Nizer All AD, the world's number one prescribed ingredient for dandruff in non-prescription strength. People can stay dandruff-free by doing this with Nizer All AD only twice a week. Only twice a week. What a pity. Nice roll, AD. The freedom will go to your head. Hey! Is that a Kit Kat bar? Can we have a piece? Uh, sure. <laughs> Number one Florida State takes on number two Virginia Tech for the national championship. The Nokia Sugar Bowl, January 4th. Number Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Mike Leeson, welcome back to the track meet. <laughs> Boise State at the moment out in front, 21-17. Well, take a look at the uh, ways in which Boise State has scored here today. Three drives of 80 yards. If you want to count that third score as a drive, the interception return for a touchdown by Shadarn Hartz. So they've scored on the ground. Bart Hendricks through the air on a reception for a touchdown by Shea Swan, and then the return by Hartz for the touchdown off the interception. Don't go away. This one's far, far from over. They're not going to kick to Zeke Parker, a short pooch kick. Taken on the far sidelines by one of the up backs, and he's out of bounds. So it'll be a first down across the 30-yard line. As Tony Stallings, a running back, former linebacker, is the man who got that kickoff. Take a look at this interception. Why it happens, the, the left guard and left tackle go to the outside. That allows Mike Malloy to come underneath. They whiff on him. He gets right into Redmond's face, and Redmond, as we talked earlier, stands in there to the last possible second, throws a bad pass. And take a look at the run. Nobody was going to catch Chenard Hartz. Well, that's one way to make up for a personal foul that gives the other team a first down. Frank Moreau to the outside. Hartz meets him at the chalk marks on the far side. 38-yard line gain of five. Chenard Hartz is a little fired up, I'd say, right now. He takes <laughs> on a dead Frank Moreau and just squares him up right on the sideline. Six carries, 35 yards for Moreau. I would say uh, Chenard Hartz is feeling pretty good about himself, and he should. <laughs> Thank you. He's going to go and say, I don't know if I'm going to take Moreau on again like that. Yeah, exactly. He said, I need a break now. 80-yard <laughs> interception return next into the game on Frank Moreau. Here's Moreau once again sliding past a defender. Marcel Yates, who came in in place of Chenard Hartz, makes the tackle not before Moreau picks up a first down. I think the Cardinal would like to kind of settle things down a little bit here, Randy, on this drive and put together some time consumption. And they've got the perfect quarterback to do that in Redmond. He keeps his poise. He's thrown for over 12,000 yards. He's thrown 13 interceptions this year, so he knows what it's like to step on the field after some adversity. Does a nice job of settling his team down. Blitz coming. They picked it up nicely. Moreau made a beautiful...
beautiful block and then penalty marker down. Bretman threw the ball out of play. Boy, Frank Moreau made a crunching block on the blitz right up the middle. Let's see what the call is here. Illegal hands to the face. On the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So the penalty moves it into Boise State territory. Take a look at the block by Frank Moreau, the running back. He's got to carry out a fake, but yet he keeps his head up. He sees the blitz coming, and he goes right after his knees. Does this knowing Redmond's got a short drop. Get those hands down. That gives Redmond a passing lane. Nice job by Frank Moreau. He took Kareem Williams right out of that play at the point of attack. Five receivers set Redmond to the short man. Arnold Jackson yanked down from behind by Brian Johnson. Pickup of about this five yards to the 36-yard line, second and five coming up. One thing you can tell about a, a, an experienced quarterback, watch how Redman always throws the ball to the upfield shoulder of the back, always hits him in stride so that that receiver doesn't have to turn around and slow down. When you can throw it towards the goal line, you give your receiver a chance to catch it with his momentum going forward. Second down. Able to escape. Good block off the right side of the offense by Mark Gribna and Frank Moreau rambles inside the 25. Ferris and Weber collaborate on the stop. 14-yard gain to a first down, Louisville. Well, you talked about that block by Mark Gribna. He comes through the line. He's down into the secondary, and he just leads the way, seals off a lot of the eyesight by those defensive backs. And look, if you're Frank Moreau, you're coming through. You're seeing your offensive lineman just plow through deep in the secondary. It's first down, Louisville. Boyd in motion. Moreau, big hole for a moment. Powers into it inside the 20-yard line. Down near the 18. Second down coming up for Louisville. It's hard to say that the running game is a token... Uh, piece of the puzzle for Louisville when Frank Moreau has rushed for over 1,200 yards coming in and 17 rushing touchdowns. I think, Wayne, it's become a more intricate part of their offense because it's had success. I think they tried to sprinkle it in early, but because it continued to work, they became more dependent on it, and it has continued to be successful. Out of the shotgun. Redman threw it just a bit behind his intended receiver on the play. Brooks had the coverage for the Broncos. Brooks got lucky on that play, Wayne. I think he was guessing Redmond was under some pressure, and Ivan Green slipped right behind him. There you see the blitz coming through, and Brooks goes for the interception or the knockdown, doesn't get there. And if there's any way Green can get that, uh, he doesn't get there at all. It's just a pass thrown behind Green, untouchable. Third down. his man wraps up Redmond with an ankle grab back outside the 25-yard line there's a penalty marker down penalty marker down and Ivan Green is shaking up on the play at the tight end here's the call Dead ball. personal foul on the offense 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. This will push him out of field goal range. There you see Ivan Green, the All-American tight end for Louisville, shaking up. That play, Mike Malloy, defensive lineman for Boise State, just goes right around Anthony Bird, the left tackle, comes through almost untouched. The Redman never had a chance back there. They had a blitz on the uh, other side, but Malloy beat his man so cleanly, so quickly, Redman had no chance to get away. Once again, a little low slap, and that's just a blown assignment. It looks yep. as though the left guard, Darzinski, is supposed to block out, and when you're a defensive lineman coming through untouched, you better get the sack. Just a blown assignment. What looks like either the left guard or the left tackle, Redman never had a chance. And then the personal foul that tacks it on, as you said, Wayne, takes him out of field goal range. Shenard Hartz was coming from the other side on the blitz, but didn't have to because, again, Malloy off that uh, blown block. 
able to get to the quarterback. Now the penalty moves the football back to the 42-yard line of Boise State. And it should have been, a, and it was, a dead ball after the play. That's why the down counts. That's why it's fourth down instead of third. So on for the first time today, Chris Savori. Eight inside the 20 for Savori this season. Hits on the 10, the tail dragger into the end zone. Boise State will start at its 20-yard line, 42-yard punt by Savori. Back and forth we go with the Broncos on the lead at 10.35 to go in the half. Wanna party? It's the biggest party of the new millennium. Tostitos Fiesta Bowl brings you college football's biggest party presented by Cox Communications. The party kicks off the millennium's toughest battle at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. A fiesta of food, drinks, fun, cheerleaders, bands, and a lot more. Sunday, January 2nd, noon to 5.30 at Rio Salado Park in Tempe. Advanced tickets only $10 at Dillard's or the Fiesta Bowl office. It's tons of Tostitos fun and Fiesta flavor, so be there. Who exactly fixes a satellite TV system? Other than you, that is. With Cox Digital Cable, service and repair are free and guaranteed, should you ever have a problem. Now, upgrade to Cox Digital Cable for free. Plus, get your first month of digital service, six channels of stars, and four channels of Cinemax for one month, absolutely free. Call 602-277-1000 and order today. Cox Digital Cable, digital television without the dish. VSPN Classic presents a special New Year's Day showing of VSPN Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes. If you missed any of the 50 Greatest Athlete profiles, here's your chance to see the countdown presented in its entirety. An all-day, round-the-clock marathon that no sports fan should miss. ESPN Sports Century presented by General Motors. Watch ESPN Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes Marathon beginning at 7 a.m. New Year's Day, only on ESPN Classic. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Mike Gleason, great to have you back in Boise, the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Well, take a look at this. We mentioned Boise State's defense might be the uh, quiet determining factor in this game, and they have come to the fore in the last three possessions. Hearts with the knockdown. Hearts with the interception return for a touchdown. And then Malloy with the crucial sack right there to take uh, Louisville out of field goal range. Now the offense of Boise State leading 21-17 back on the field. First down from the 20-yard line of the Broncos. Brock Forsey. Boy, did he power through that hole. He read it beautifully. Rashad Holman in the deep secondary made the stop. Up near the 39-yard line on a 19-yard gain. A rare successful running play, especially to the inside for Boise State. You look at this hole, of course he does a nice job of letting his block set up, and then he shows his speed, probably the fastest of the three running backs for Boise State, gets through there for their biggest gain on the ground yet today. First down, just short of the 40-yard line for Boise State. Barn Hendricks at the control. Off play action has time. Got a man down the middle. Lou Fanuki, the playmaker, to the 10 yard line of Louisville. 51 yard pass play. Bart Hendricks taking advantage of the man to man coverage. He sees this pre snap. The play action pass brings the free safety up a little bit, and then there's no center field help. Fanuki just runs right by Rashad Holman, the best cover guy for Louisville. And fortunately for Louisville, he was close enough to make the tackle. But there you see John L. Smith knowing what was coming, and his players just couldn't make the play. And you just feel helpless over there on the sideline. First and goal to go, Boise State at the Louisville 10. Hendrick short drop, hop flies for the end zone and overshot Davison out of play. Well, John L. Smith knew that if Boise State had success early, this crowd was going to get into this game. He also felt that they were going to be playing on a lot of emotion early. That emotion should settle down in the second half, and it will become more team against team instead of the crowd and everything. They have to stay. Keep it close, though. Don't let Boise State get too much momentum or too far ahead.
Hendricks, 8 of 14, 165 yards. Melathon. Ball popped loose. I'm not sure if he was down or not. It did come loose, and it is Louisville football. So Louisville turns back Boise State, forcing its first turnover. Gentos made the hit that pried it loose. One of the constants that both coaches told us yesterday, turnovers would play a key part in this. Here you see a nice hole, but Mike Ganto, 74, comes through with the hit, sticks that left arm in there, and knocks that ball loose. Clearly a fumble, and Louisville knows they had to make a stand there, didn't want to go down by 11, comes up with the ball. Mike Brown comes up with the football. There's the reaction by Coach Cutter on the sidelines. Meanwhile, penalty marker down on the first play from scrimmage. Frank Moreau gets the call up the middle for short yardage. You could see Dick Dirk Cutter at that time. You could read his lips. He saw the fumble as it came out and said it to himself. And turned out to be a, a big play for that Louisville defense. And now Boise State helping them again with another face mask. Another face mask penalty against the Boise State defense. And so this literally takes Louisville out of the hole. Incidental face mask on a defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. Still first down. Doesn't quite get him out of the hole, but uh, does get him an extra five yards. Sports Century 50 Greatest Athletes Marathon coming up. A weekly event that counts down the top 50 North American athletes of the past century. Looks back at the countdown. It's an entirety on ESPN2. Starts tonight, 7.30 Eastern Time. On first down, Moreau got by Johnson on the cutback. Beautiful run by Frank Moreau out near the 25-yard line. Over to make the uh, tackle on the play, Tony Altieri, a defensive tackle. Wayne, what we've seen the last two drives that Louisville's had the ball is they've really started to get this running game going. And though they haven't had any points out of it, if they continue to have that success, Boise State's going to have to come up to stop that, and that's going to open things up as this game goes on for Redmond in that passing game. Four receivers set for Redmond. Play action. Intercepted and dropped by Shenard Hartz. Intended for Lavelle Boyd. My goodness. Well, you don't see that happen very often where Chris Redmond will just throw the ball almost blindly into a very well-covered receiver. Not fooled by this play action right here. Redmond's got plenty of time to get his head upfield, but look how well-covered Boyd is. No chance for that ball to be complete. Fortunately for Redmond, it wasn't intercepted. Is that a tough throw, the quarterback rolling to his right? That's got to be a tougher throw, throwing back against the green. Uh, it's not a tough throw when you have time to get your head around and you can see things develop, which he did at that point. Yeah, they had Joe, going to the left. They had Joe O'Shaughnessy out in front of that play, helping him out with the blocking. Frank Moreau gets maybe a yard to the 25-yard line here. And Mike Gleason is with us. And give us an update. Uh, what do you find out on Ivan Green, Mike? Well, Wayne, actually, when he was helped out the field the previous series, he uh, strained his quadriceps in his right leg. Uh, he's going to be okay, maybe a little bit slower, but he's been in and out uh, since the injury, and he said on the sidelines there's no way they could keep him off the field for his last football game at Louisville. Wayne? Take a look at him uh, right here. Well, he has drastically improved his blocking, and look at this block right now. Takes his man all the way to the sideline and then jumps on top of him. He took Zach Weber out of that play. Third down. Under pressure, Redmond on the roll, and he's got his man broken up out of play. Incomplete. Beautiful play made by Dempsey D's Arnold Jackson, the intended receiver. So the Boise State defense responds. It's fourth down, Louisville. Take a look again, a whiff by the offensive line. Now, this is a line that only gave up 20 sacks all year. Redmond can't quite get the ball there quickly enough because he's running for his life, and it gives Dees a, 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 enough time to get to the sideline and knock that ball down. But, Wayne, this is an offensive line that I think has drastically got to prove their mental assignments, their mental mistakes, not physical mistakes. Sabori just did get that kick away from Lou Fanuki. Dropped on the play. Louisville football. Dropped by Damian Schilling. Corey Wallace came up with it. So the Broncos with a huge mistake. Louisville back on the field offensively at the 31-yard line. Watch this. It starts early in the play. 
generally when you have a punt block on, you tell your receiver to fair catch the ball because he doesn't have any blocking. He chooses not to fair catch it. It goes right through him. And Louisville's one opportunity down there grabs the ball, gives them excellent field position, though I do think they're going to be penalized possibly for excess celebration because that's what the flag is, I believe. Well, turnovers now becoming a... Unsportsmanlike celebration, Randy, as you mentioned. And this takes it from the 31 back to the 46-yard line of Boise State. Boise State spoiling one scoring opportunity with a fumble and now giving Louisville decent field position with their second. Quick toss. Jackson trying to get away. Can't quite do it. Damon Bowie made the stop. Lee, what do you have? Well, Wayne, of course, uh, Chris Redmond's already thrown an interception that's been returned for an 80-yard touchdown, but the guy won't get rattled. He's played for four different offensive coordinators. Last year's offensive coordinator, Bob Pertino, is now the quarterback coach for the Jacksonville Jags. And Scott Linehan, this year's offensive coordinator, says the guy simply will not get rattled. The human element, you'd think there'd be some resistance, but he just goes in there and says, Coach, what you want me to do? And he simply does it. Back upstairs. Thank you, Mike. On second down, Moreau trying to escape and does. Boy, what a power run at the end of that one. Frank Burrow's got the first down just inside the 35-yard line, nine-yard gain. And if you're Dirk Cutter, you realize you only get so many opportunities to put points on the board. His offense was playing with such momentum on such a roll. They've turned the ball over now two times in a row. That offense has been on the bench for a long time. He, I'm sure, is hoping that they don't lose that momentum that they'd established early here. Frank Burrow, 74 yards rushing now, Randy. So... Louisville beginning to show that it can work the football against this Boise State defense in more ways than one, and I think you're right. That's going to change the complexion of the way perhaps Boise State zones up or mans up defensively in the secondary. No better way to take the crowd out of a game than to run the football well. On first down at the 35, Boyd in motion. The short drop, Redman going over the top for Jackson. Pass just barely overthrown looked like good coverage by Dempsey Dees that, that did look like very good coverage Dempsey Dees the leader of this secondary for Boise State six interceptions and 11 in his last 21 but this ball was pretty well thrown and it didn't look as though Jackson made any extra effort to catch that no dive no attempts just kind of let it go thinking it wasn't going to be right in his arms and Maybe thought he should have laid out right there, made an attempt for it. Second and ten. Redman may be calling the play at the line. Short drop, quick throw. Jackson, hammer down. Penalty, or I should say whistles early in that play. I don't see a marker. A delay a game. Apparently there was a marker thrown on that play. So no play, and uh, they'll redo it five yards back. Delay game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. The turnovers and the penalties beginning to add up for both sides. Especially the penalties. It's hard to get into an offensive rhythm when you're constantly having the clock stopped and the discussion, and then you got to go back to the huddle. Eight penalties overall against Louisville here this afternoon. 74 yards and losses. Now it's second and 15 at the 40-yard line of Boise State. Six and a half minutes to go, first half. Boise State by four. Redmond again calls the play of the line, ducks it under Jason Padgett. Penalty markers down. I believe this again delay a game. I don't think he got it off again. Randy, is he changing? Is he being forced to change plays at the line, or is he just calling plays at the line because of what he sees defensively by uh, Boise State? Well, I think it's probably a combination of both. What he's doing it is changing it at the line of scrimmage to the quick pass, the quick out. 
But I think what happens sometimes in bowl games, you get a feel as a quarterback how your conference's officials run the clock. Some officials started early, some started late. When you get into a bowl game, you run with a different crew of officials. It takes you a while to get used to how much time you have. And obviously, Chris Redman hasn't gotten used to that yet. Two consecutive delay of game penalties has made it second down and 20 from the 45 of Boise State. Now in the shotgun, five receivers set. Redman pump fakes and over the middle he goes. Lavelle Boyd trying to cut it back and breaks a tackle. Down to the 25-yard line. It looks like he's got a 20-yard gain at a first down. Kareem Williams, the linebacker, along with Brian Johnson, collaborate on the stop. It is a first down for the Louisville Cardinals. Nice job by Redmond. He's got plenty of time here to throw the ball, steps up, and a nice play by Boyd, not only on the catch, but on the run after the catch. That's what gives them the first down, is that extra effort. Picked up that first down just by a couple of inches, looks like. Wayne, one thing if you're an offense, when you see a defense blitz and they have success, and that's what Boise State has been doing, is coming after Redmond with five, six, seven, eight guys. When you see them have success, they're going to continue to do it. And the counter for that, Randy, draw plays, screen passes, that type of thing? You go on long counts, you get him to jump off sides, you go on quick hitting pass plays that will allow your receivers maybe to break something open, but the most important thing is you've got to pick up the blitz. You've got to show them that when you blitz, you're still not going to get to the quarterback, and Louisville has yet to do that today. Well, the Cardinals are inches short of a first down at the 25-yard line of Boise State, and they face third down. Frank Moreau will all set back behind Redmond. Quick count, quarterback sneak should be enough for the first down. And Randy, you see a lot of that in those third and inches situations. The quick count before the defense is set. The quarterback just picks a hole and goes to it. Don't adjust the screen of your television. We are on the blue turf of Bronco Stadium in Boise. Crucial.com, Humanitarian Bowl 3. Wayne Larravee, Randy Wright, Mike Gleason. Great to have you with us. Take a look at 208 yards of offense for Louisville in this first half. How about Boise State? They're up there as well. Good block by Jackson. Boyd steered out of bounds to the near side. One thing about these Louisville wide receivers, they are good blockers downfield. Arnold Jackson escorting Lavelle Boyd on that play, a gain of about seven or eight yards. Nice adjustment Louisville makes here. When they want to get rid of the ball quickly, they put Redmond in the shotgun. They don't put him under center. He's had four passes blocked at the line of scrimmage right. from under center. Put him in the shotgun, you make that defense run that much further, they can't get there. Do you try to roll the pocket a little bit? I think you got to start going on longer counts and start mixing in rolling the pocket, but that's not Louisville's game. They like him back there. Moreau trying to cut it back. Nowhere to go. Number one, the penetration up front on the defensive uh, front line for Boise State, and then Brian Johnson cleaned it up, made sure that Frank Moreau was not going to be able to spin away for a first down so it becomes third down for Louisville Brian Johnson the linebacker for Boise State first on the team in tackles and first on in the, on the team in tackles for losses yet he stays out there in pass coverage also he's a senior he played tight end and fullback as a freshman didn't play linebacker until his sophomore year trips to the top of your screen Redmond in the shotgun here's the roll Redmond trying to escape and does inside the 15. He's got the first down near the 12-yard line. Kareem Williams made the tackle for Boise State. You mentioned earlier moving the pocket. That's a good sprinkle that they do because if you know you're going to sit back in the pocket, you can direct where you bring your blitzes as a defensive coordinator. There you see 44, Andy Bennett chasing from the backside. If you can just show that you've got the ability to move the pocket, you're going to keep that defense guessing, and they're going to become a little more conservative, a little more stable. And then you look, you make Andy Bennett and Mike Malloy go a lot farther. There's Louisville inside the red zone. Moreau running hard to the eight-yard line. Hill in on that tackle along with El Terry. Second down upcoming for Louisville. 
One of the differences you'll see between Louisville and Boise State is Louisville has more confidence in their running game, and they've got a bigger back back there with Frank Moreau. 17 touchdowns on the ground. This is where they go to him. Boise State, no matter how close they get, passing is always a big part of their game. But when they run it, it's Bart Hendricks running it. Five receivers set, naked shotgun, quick toss. Redmond got his man, touchdown. Touchdown, Damian Dorsey, redshirt freshman from Anniston, Alabama. A jar touchdown catch by Dorsey, and Louisville vaults back into the lead. Well, Shenard Hart, the strong safety, is not a super cover man. That time giving plenty of cushion to his receiver, Damian Dorsey, one of the easiest Pitch and catches Redman will have is he gets the ball to Dorsey. Dorsey almost gets into the end zone before Hartz can come up there and make any contact. Gilbert. And the extra point is good. Three minutes, 39 seconds left to be played. Louisville Cardinals, Boise State Broncos. Back and forth it goes with Chris Redman and the Cardinals in the lead, 24-21. Join Club Ramada now, and every cool dip in our pool, every chill drink on our menu, every cozy night in our rooms will be even more rewarding. Club Ramada is free to join, and every dollar you spend will take you closer to great rewards like free nights, free flights, and free fun stuff for the whole family. Join Club Ramada, and earning great rewards will be easier than ever. For reservations, call 1-800-2-RAMADA or at ramada.com on the Internet. This is a real mom-and-pop hardware store. I think we have a nice family feel. A couple of months ago, we got a little bump in our car. Oh, we've been with our State Farm agent for 26 years. Because I think he puts his personal self into it. Just like we do at the hardware store, he actually listens to what your needs are. It makes me feel pretty important. Get to know your State Farm agent. You can't put a price on a good relationship. Sick and tired of losing? Because if you're not, raise your hand. If you're gonna act like a loser, raise your hand. What are you doing, Jay? I didn't want you to be the only person with his hand raised, Cole. Any given Sunday at Oliver Stone Film, rated R, now playing. <laughs> Sega Dreamcast, wired to the net by AT&T. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Louisville leading 24-21 now as we have seesawed all afternoon out here in Boise. There's the scoring drive, 10 plays. Dorsey, the 8-yard touchdown reception. Dorsey's first catch of the year. Redshirt freshman. Getting some time for Charles Sheffield, who was dismissed from the team before the uh, bowl preparations began. John Hilbert. As I mentioned, out of Boonville, Indiana, in his final game for Louisville. Good strong kick here. This one in the end zone. And coming out of there, here we go. Brock Forsey out across the 25-yard line. Let's go to the studio. Reese Davis. Reese. Well, Wayne, coming up at halftime, we're going to look ahead to another team that can really put some points on the board, Clemson, as they get ready for the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl against a little bit tougher defense in Mississippi State. We'll take you around to all of the big money games with our BCS Blitz, and of course, Blitz yields big hits, and we'll have the hits of the year as administered by Dr. Jerry Punch. See you at halftime. Thank you very much, Reese. Like those big money games, don't you? I want to watch a few of those this weekend. And as a quarterback, you start talking about blitzes, and you can kind of shy away from that. <laughs> First down for Boise State. Broncos now trailing by three. Hendricks. Decisive sideline throw. Jay Swilly's got the first down, and he's escorted to the chalk marks near the 43-yard line. Swilly emerged as the top possession receiver on the team. They call him first down. The last five games, 21 catches, 323 yards, including seven catches against Idaho. Of the 21 receptions, 16 resulted in first downs. Take a look at the last five games. This is one reason why their offense has been so productive, is these young receivers have really come into their own. You see Davidson only seven catches, but a 32-yard average, and Swilly 21 in just the last five games. Play action to Malathon. Hendricks over the top. Finucchi! Diving grab for a first 
down at the 36-yard line. Rashad Holman, the coverage for Louisville. 21-yard pickup. What a great throw by Bart Hendricks. Stands back there in the pocket, gets excellent time, good protection, sees the ball, the, the field developed downfield, but throws that ball perfectly to the sideline. Fanuki makes a nice catch. Just, I, I am really impressed with Bart Hendricks here. Two long sideline throws for Hendricks on the last two plays have moved the Broncos into enemy territory. Louisville showing a blitz. Long count by Hendricks. Five-step drop in traffic, trying to thread it over the middle to a pretty well-covered tight end by the name of Dave Stahelski. And he had uh, good coverage on him from the safety, Corey Wallace. Dave Stahelski was the leading receiver coming into this season, the veteran tight end. Played a much bigger part early in the year as these young receivers were feeling their way. As they started to develop and started to contribute, Stahelski kind of fell by and hasn't been as big a part of the offense as he was earlier. Hendricks off to a good start today. By the way, Stahelski will be playing in the East-West Shrine Game January 15th in Palo Alto, California. The first Bronco since 1986. Mm -hmm. Second down. Little swing pass. Here comes Stahelski. Made the first man miss, but not the second. Boy, that second man doesn't miss many tackles. Michael Brown, the bandit back. He is tough. Best athlete, as we mentioned, on this team. All freshman team selection. Red shirt freshman out of Louisville. Was a great high school basketball player in Kentucky. Was an outstanding running back, as you said. We talked to John L. Smith. We said, did you think he was going to be this good a linebacker this early? And he was a running back. Did you recruit him as a running back? And, oh, yeah. We recruited him as a running back. In his mind. In his mind. That's the key word there. In his mind. He's always going to play linebacker for us. And he's a good one. Boise State, 50% on third downs. Hendricks, oh, pass just a bit off the mark. Stahelski had disengaged from the coverage just a bit. And it'll be fourth down now for Boise State. That was a very wobbly ball. Don't know if that got tipped at the line or if Hendricks was just rushing the throw a little bit and made a bad pass. But that ball was uncatchable for Stahelski. That could have been a key third down pickup. Field goal unit comes on to the field. Nick Kalayakai, 45 has been his long. And this will be a 49-yard field goal attempt. The kick end over and into the uprights, and it is no good. Short and to the near side. So the Louisville defense has held. Speaking of Louisville, the kids from Kentucky have had a good time out here in the snow. On Tuesday, the Cardinals took time out to try their hands at snowmobiling. There you see the smart ones wearing a helmet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some of the players did bring their helmets to the airport to Helio Pad in Idaho City, just 20 miles north of Boise in the Salmon River Mountains. Boy, John L. Uh, was mentioning to us, John L. Smith, the head coach, saying, I couldn't get the guys off the snowmobiles. My goodness. They just loved it. They've had a great time out here. Moreau hit a couple of times, and down he goes near the 35, a gain of a few yards. Mike Malloy, the principal defender on the stop for Boise State. We're inside of two minutes to go in this first half. These two teams have combined for 45 points. So this game has lived up to expectation. As we thought it, it would be pretty clean game, although the second quarter a little more played with penalties. Louisville, though, plenty of time left on the clock should they choose to put the ball up in the air. Redman just throws, and Malloy gets his second sack of the second quarter. Louisville didn't seem to be in a big hurry to get the ball snapped, though they're under two minutes to go, and they have two timeouts left. Mike Malloy, though, has played an outstanding first half, just going right around Anthony Bird. Just a, a missed tackle, and he has been living in the backfield here with Chris Redman. Nine-yard loss on the play, and Boise State, Randy, takes a timeout because they may have an opportunity to do a little something here with a minute 14 left to go. And then take a look at that Boise State defense. The big key for them has been the way they have forced turnovers with the uh, 29 turnovers coming into this game. Uh, they've done a tremendous job there, but they've also had 42 sacks over the course of the season. So, 
But if you can't get to a television set this weekend, catch all the BCS action on ESPN Radio. Check your local listings for the stations in your area. We've got the Rose Bowl coming your way on New Year's Day. Boy, that should be a, a fine ball game between uh, Stanford and Wisconsin. And then the Orange Bowl. Michigan, Alabama, followed by the Fiesta with Nebraska and Tennessee. And then on January 4th, the Sugar Bowl National Championship game, Florida State, Virginia Tech. Okay, what's your call in the Sugar Bowl, Florida State, Virginia Tech? I'm going to go, I'm going to pull for Virginia Tech. I'm going to say Florida State's going to win. <laughs> but I always I, I tell you what, Do you always walk in the middle of the road like that? I always hedge my bets. Okay. <laughs> Mike Gleason, uh, Chris Redmond's been knocked around a little bit today. How's he holding up? Well, Wayne, he's holding up just fine, but that's a good point because one of three passers, Division 1A, to throw for 12,000 yards. But if he has an Achilles, it's his chin. Several times his chin has been busted open, as a matter of fact, two or three times this year. You can see his face mask. They tried several face masks. Uh, the one you can see right there is a little bit larger than most quarterback face masks, and he has a special chin strap made to keep him uh, on the field so to prevent the bandaging and even stitching. Thank you, Mike. I guess you could say he's got a glass jaw. I'm glad he's not boxing. <laughs> would be a real liability. Four times the Louisville Sports Information Department told us he's been stitched up during a game yep. where he's had to come out, get stitches in his chin, and go back in and play. And then Coach John L. Smith said four times. He goes, well, four times that you know of. Yeah, that you know of, exactly. He's playing for the most part in this quarter, Randy, without his his longtime receiver, and that would be Ivan Green, the tight end who's been in and out of the lineup since being shaken up earlier in this second quarter. And uh, he's been on the sidelines. There he is right there. And uh, this is a kid that has played with Chris Redmond since the eighth grade. They have had a tremendous bond together. And uh, you just hope Ivan Green can come back. Maybe they can work on that uh, leg injury he suffered earlier and, and get him back into the lineup for this final half of football with Chris Redmond. There's a look at him, a senior, male high school, Louisville, Kentucky, where he and Chris and another teammate were coached by Chris's father. Third down. Redmond waits. And it's incomplete. He was trying to hit Jackson. And the pass sailed wide of the mark near the 50-yard line. Boise State's defense really playing more and more role as this game grinds on. Mike Malloy having a career game here in this first half. Comes into this game with only six sacks. Watch the top of your screen, though. He'll come around the backside, get his arms around Redmond, and cause the poor throw. Louisville is going to have to do something to take care of him in this second half. Either keep a back in or slide the line and block him with a guard and tackle. Savori in punt formation. Shanked it. It does drag in favor of Louisville. Schilling picks up on it. And Damian Schilling on the return. Good play by him. That ball could have rolled well inside the 30-yard line, but he made the grab near the 35. Got it out to the 40. Coming up, Reese Davis and Coach John Makovic. Peach Bowl preview. Bowl blitz and hits of the year. I'd like to send along my best to Coach Makovic. Penalty marker down, by the way, on the far side. Coach Makovic and I knew each other in a previous life back in his days as head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs when I was broadcasting down there. Unsportsmanlike conduct is the preliminary indication, and it's against Boise State. Well, after the play had ended, the referee was the one that threw that flag, pointed over towards the Boise State sideline. And this is a huge penalty that will mark them all the way back to the 25-yard line and take away what would have been very good field position with just over a minute to go. So a minute three left to be played in this first half. Two timeouts left for Louisville, just one for Boise State. You're down by three if you're Boise State. You've had so much success moving the ball. I think you got to try and get some first downs. If you do, then you can take some big shots, but you also have to be careful if you're Bart Hendrick. Don't do something to turn this ball over and give Louisville a cheap score right before the half. Louisville leading by three. Hendricks, the long throw to the sideline. Jay Swilly's got a first down. 36-yard line escorted to the far side by Rashad Holman. 
That's just what we were talking about, a safe throw. If you can pick up 10, 15 yards, now you get the ball out to the 35-ish, right around there. Now you can start taking a few more risks. Nice route on the outside there by number one, Swilly. Does a good job creating some separation, catches the ball, and fights to get out of bounds. Well, you said safe, not easy. That's not an easy throw for a quarterback, is it? it it's easy if you throw it on time. Hendricks hit as he pops it over the middle. Pass fell Aaron incomplete. Good pass rush pressure up the middle by Mike Gantos. Wait, I should say it's easier if you throw it on time. <laughs> yes. People don't realize those sideline routes, especially the deep sideline routes, the quarterback has to throw the ball a long way. And, and it's only half the battle. The receiver has got to do a good job of selling the deep route to drive that defensive back off. If not, that defensive back sits on that break, he can get up there, break that ball up, or worse yet, intercept it. 44 seconds to go on the hand, second and 10. the defense there and a penalty marker thrown late 32 yard gain Brock Forsey they have sprinkled him into the running game haven't they here's a call coming up Steve Youssef face mask against Louisville so they tack a couple of yards out of this one I believe it was an incidental incidental face mask penalty Take a look at right here, Jeremy Minkins. He's the guy who pulls out and opens up this hole as Forsey goes right through it. He gets the key block. Me what it means to be a true fan. What it means to come out and give 110%. Right, Dad? Hendricks lets it go late over the middle and complete. I believe he was trying to hit Stahelski. And we apologize for some of the technical difficulties we had out here in Boise a moment ago. Lost our fee back to ESPN2. And we'll have the end of the half in the final 18 seconds coming up. Third and 10 for Boise State. Football just inside the 30 at the 28 yard line. See Dirk Cutter there, the head coach, talking to Brett, uh, Bart Hendricks, telling him, if it's there, take it, try and improve the field position, but don't turn the ball over. Let's try and at least get three out of this and go into halftime tied. Timeout taken by Louisville. And so each side with one timeout remaining. So the Cardinals will chalk it over it again. Halftime coming up with Reese Davis and the coach, John Makovic. And then we'll be back for the uh, second half of this afternoon's track meet. Louisville on top 24-21 at the uh, moment. you got a decision to make here if you're a Louisville and defensive coordinator Tris, Chris Smeelan. Do you try and come after Hendricks? He's been very elusive back there. When you blitzed him, you haven't had a lot of success. But if you can go after him, maybe get him out of field goal range. Timeout Louisville. And, boy, there's going to be a halftime show here. They've got some big time. Randy, uh, did you order a diet soda of some sort? Because there it is, pal. <laughs> I that, tell that, you. That may get me past the second half. <laughs> well, if you take all of that at halftime, I can guarantee you're going to miss part of the fourth quarter. Somebody's going to be bouncing off the walls. <laughs> yes. Well, John L. Smith, the head coach at Louisville, this is his second Humanitarian Bowl appearance in the inaugural Humanitarian Bowl. John L.'s Utah State Aggies took on the Cincinnati Bearcats, and Utah it's State's Steve Smith turned this reception into the most exciting play in Humanitarian Bowl history as he worked his way 75 yards for a touchdown. Back live, 1999, Bart Hendricks on third down. Looking downfield and hit from behind as he let it go and complete again. It was Gantos draped all over him from behind. It is fourth down now for Boise State and the field goal unit on. 
Nice job by Mike Gantos, one of the strongest players on the football team, can bench press 470 pounds, a two-time captain. Louisville didn't have to bring the blitz in order to get to Hendricks that time. This will be a 45-yard field goal attempt that would equal his longest of the season. He missed a 49-yarder earlier. One thing, though, today, with the weather being as cold as it is, and Kalaikai standing on the sideline, the ball may not travel as far as the last time he made his 45-yarder earlier this season. 14 seconds to go, and the Louisville took a timeout to quote-unquote ice the kicker, which would be no big problem on a day like today with the temperature hovering around 20 degrees. America's Cup Challenge rounds 2000, the Louis Vuitton Cup Challenger semifinals. Six top boats will advance to the semifinals. Jim Kelly heads our coverage for all the sailing. ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network. Go.com. Coverage getting underway on Sunday. As you can see, the valley is pretty much snow snowless, I should say, but up in the uh, hills, there is some snow. Mike Gleason down at the Louisville bench. What do you have for us? Well, Wayne, a lot of talk on the Louisville bench uh, right now about the fact that they lost to Marshall in the uh, Motor City Bowl last year. They finished 7-5, and five, and right now, of course, they're 7-4. and four, And they're saying there's a big, big difference between finishing the season at 8-4 and 7-5 and and if they should lose this football game. They'd be 7-5 and five again. That's something they definitely don't want to do, Wayne. Yeah, they feel they want to take that next step, as you mentioned, Mike. And this would be a big uh, a game toward that end. It would be the game toward that end. Kalakai's kick from 45 yards away comes up short. Randy, going to be tough to get much distance on field goal tries here today in these cool climbs. It, it's not the wind, but the ball is just very heavy, as you said. It, it's a heavy cold. Ball doesn't travel as far. We've seen it in the punting game and on a couple of field goal attempts. So Louisville will take over for the final nine seconds of this first half with their three-point lead intact. Take a look at the field goal attempt a moment ago. And well, you talk about the cold affecting the kickers. It also affects the holding and the snap. In that time, pretty good holds. Just didn't quite get enough on the kick. Redmond downs the football for the final play of the first half. But these two teams have entertained to the tunes of 45 points between them. Dirk Cutter and company head off their home field, trailing at halftime to the Louisville Cardinals, 24 to 21. A cool afternoon in Boise, and we've got a second half coming up you won't want to miss. Two high-powered offenses, and halftime is coming up. Let's go back to the studio, Reese Davis. Wayne, those 45 points you talked about make this game the highest-scoring bowl game of bowl season already, John. Uh, and, and we sort of suspected it, so so much for all of that defensive talk we've had so far. Yeah, one of the things, you look at the weather outside and you think, boy, I, I doubt that they're going to be able to throw the ball. Players love to throw and run around on a day like today. It keeps their blood moving. They stay warm and everything. These two offenses obviously have never heard of Aretha Franklin because they're giving the defenses no <laughs> R-E-S-P-E-C-T at all. And they still like to run around even on the blue turf. Oh, yeah. The blue like turf's it. okay, yeah. isn't it? It is when you run up and down it the way these teams have, and we'll have much more coming up on this game a little later. But first, on the halftime report, we'll look ahead to tonight. The Peach Bowl, Tommy Bowden leading Clemson against Mississippi State, while Dad's getting ready for the Sugar Bowl, Will Blitz. taught me what it means to be a true fan. What it means to come out and give 110%. Right, Dad? Yeah! <laughs> I'm, I'm more the quiet thing. Oh, yeah! <laughs> well, the cold doesn't bother me so much. It's the chili dogs. Oh. That's why I bring out the Rolaids. Rolaid starts to neutralize acid in less than 10 seconds, getting you back on your game fast. It's just like Grandpa always says. You gotta be your best out here. Rolaids, R-O-L-A-I-D-S, spells relief. Mom doesn't make it out to the games. I don't know why. 
just in time for the holidays at Circuit City. Get an instant $400 toward any Circuit City purchase. When you sign up for three years of CompuServe 2000 Premier Internet Service, only $21.95 per month. Just sign up at Circuit City, and we'll hand you a $400 merchandise card instantly. Good toward anything in our store. Apply your $400 merchandise card to a computer, camcorder, big screen TV, or refrigerator. It's $400 of whatever you want, only at Circuit City. It all began in a stadium. Then TV brought pro football into your home. But now it's a new era, and your TV just isn't big enough anymore. Log on to Enhanced TV, the most entertaining way to experience Monday night and Sunday night football. Get live up-to-the-minute stats as they happen. Play our exclusive live interactive game and trivia. Experience what other users are raving about. During the game, be part of the action. Go to ESPN.com or NFL.com and log on to Enhanced TV. And Bull Week's been given some enhanced scoring. Louisville over Boise State 24-21 at the break already. The highest scoring game of the bowl season. Well, coming up tonight, we've got the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Clemson taking on Mississippi State. Clemson, a team that's really turned it around in Tommy Bowden's first year in Death Valley. Mississippi State finished the season 9-2 and and may be expected to go to a little bit higher paying bowl game. But the Bulldogs, their schedule wasn't that tough. In the SEC East, they avoided Tennessee, Florida, and Georgia. And in fact, in the regular season, and the only teams with winning records that they beat, Kentucky and Ole Miss. So the dogs will be looking for a little respect tonight on ESPN, and that's where we have Dave Barnett and Bill Curry, who will call the game for us. Gentlemen? Circuit City Bowl Week continues with the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in Atlanta. If there was a game that typified Mississippi State's cardiac season, it had to be the Egg Bowl Thanksgiving night. Ten points in the final 27 seconds as the Bulldogs pulled out a 23-20 win over their arch rival Ole Miss. They're ninth against only two losses this year. Five close calls in those 11 games decided by three or fewer points. Four wins out of the nine in the final 100 seconds, failing only to pull out the game at Arkansas. That is a very dangerous way to live. I guess by now Jackie Sherrill's got to be used to it. I think Jack is used to it, and I think the rest of his football team is used to it. The first ingredient of great football teams that win repeatedly in the final minutes, I think, is outstanding defense. This defense leads the nation in yards allowed. 222 yards in this era of great offenses. Defensive coordinator Joe Lee Dunn may have done his best job ever in that area. The second thing that happens, it's more important, is the team begins to expect to win. So you come down to the final minutes, you're behind, but everybody on the football team just knows that they're going to find a way. There's nothing stronger than that in a football team. So you get an attitude that says, we refuse to lose. Mississippi State, a perfect fit for the Peach Bowl every year. This game comes down to the final seconds. Let's send it back to the studio. All right, guys, it looks as if some New Year's fireworks already gone off on Bill's tie there. But I tell you, you know, there could be some fireworks in this game from Clemson. I think there's a perception out there, John, that Clemson's sort of done it with smoke and mirrors. If they don't have the personnel, are they overmatched against a team that was number one in the country in total defense? They're not overmatched, but also they played a tougher schedule. They played the three undefeated teams in Division 1A. Lost to all of them, but they at least played them. Mississippi State didn't play anyone of that caliber throughout the year. One of the things that Mississippi State will try to do is use that top-ranked defense. They have an All-American in Darren Simpson, and he'll be all over the place. Joe Lee Dunn has a history of blitzing him and coming every which way. But... Whether it's Woodrow Dantzler or Brandon Streeter, we're not sure who's going to play quarterback. They're going to spread them out. They're going to force them to play one-on-one -on -one and see if they can get Rod Gardner and Brian Wofford loose. They had 127 receptions between them during the year. Wouldn't really be surprised to see both quarterbacks dance. It gives you a little bit more athletic guy back there, and Streeter makes good decisions. Streeter's been beaten up all season long, I'll tell you. So, you know, Streeter's a guy who had a broken collarbone, also suffered a dislocated hip. So he's a guy that Mississippi State will be gunning for, no doubt. Well, Chris Redman's been gunning the ball all over the place in the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Redman, big-time pro prospect, finding Arnold Jackson from 54 yards out, and his Cardinals have a 24-21 lead at the break. We're back. I'm just in for a couple of days with a sink, bottle of shampoo, and a dream. What do you think I should see? Can I ask you a couple of questions about shampoo? Try great shampoo. Perk Plus. This is 
reformulated Pert Plus. It's got water-based conditioning. Okay, fine. She looks great. How do I look? You know, one thing I can say, Las Vegas has the most uneven pavement I've ever seen in my life. Oh! I'm freezing my f off. There's the lodge. I'll make him turn. Wait a minute. The angle's too sharp. Don't be a wimp. I know what I'm doing. Nice job. Now we're going to have to call his parents. We'll use 1-800-COLLECT. Save him a buck or two. 1-800-COLLECT. Now you're being logical. Poor baby. Aww. Nice cat. Hi, Mom. Use your head. 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. Or three. There's a moment as I bite into a Wendy's classic double with cheese when everything around me seems to come to a stop. My senses focus on that hot, juicy beef and cool, crisp toppings. But that frozen moment all seems right in the world. Of course, nothing lasts forever. Then again, I can always come back tomorrow. Wow, this is nutty. Hamburger Bliss. It comes with every Wendy's classic hamburger. Celebrate ABC's Super January with the BCS. Wisconsin meets Stanford in the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. Alabama faces Michigan in the FedEx Orange Bowl. Number three, Nebraska battles number five, Tennessee, in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And number one, Florida State meets number two, Virginia Tech, for the national championship down in New Orleans in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. And unfortunately, when the Bowl Championship Series games start on ABC, when we get out to Pasadena, we won't be seeing Troy Walters of Stanford. He suffered a dislocated right wrist, the Bolitnikoff winner did in practice while running a drill. And he cried a very emotional time when he found out that he would not be able to participate in the Rose Bowl for Stanford. He had a terrific year. He led their high-powered offense from the receiver position. So Wisconsin has one less thing to worry about on that side of the ball. But as we go through our BCS Bowl Blitz, You'll find out from Holly Rowe that perhaps the Badgers have somebody to worry about on the other side. The Wisconsin Badgers seem to have all the hardware. From the Rose Bowl last year, the Big Ten this year, even the Heisman. So what would possibly motivate them in this game against Stanford? Badger lineman Casey Robach says that the team's chance to make history by being the first team to win back-to-back -back Rose Bowls in Big Ten history is what's motivating them. He said last year they were the underdog, and that's how they played. Now they have to get that same fire back. It might be hard to achieve because of the long layoff. Badger's last game was November 13th. The team is having a tough time staying fresh and conditioned. Stanford defensive coordinator Kent Baer says he has literally lost sleep thinking about how to stop Ron Dane. His best defensive stopper, Willie Howard, is out with an ACL tear, but is working out with the team in L.A. hoping for a miracle comeback. The bowl blitz continues with Gene Wojciechowski. Alabama and Michigan haven't been to the Orange Bowl since Wolverine alum Gerald Ford was president. And while we're giving history lessons, remember this. No team has won more bowl games than Bama. But the Crimson Tide is sweating out the availability of Outland Trophy winner Chris Samuels. Samuels is having knee problems. If he can't play, Bama will move right tackle Dante Ellington to Samuels' left tackle spot. On offense, both teams are similar. Bama has Sean Alexander, Freddie Mellons, and spread formations. Michigan has Anthony Thomas, David Terrell, and spread formations. Thomas has five consecutive 100-yard games, but he'll face a Bama defense that has given up an average of just 28 rushing yards during its last seven games. The Bull Blitz continues with Tony Barnhart. Now, Tennessee can't defend its national championship, but the Volunteers can settle an old score. That's why the Big Orange will be seeing red in more ways than one when they take on Nebraska in the Fiesta Bowl. After getting pounded and embarrassed by the Cornhuskers in the 1998 Orange Bowl, Tennessee now believes it can play smash mouth with anybody. Jamal Lewis and Travis Henry are finally well, and nobody is better in tough games than T. Martin, who's 22-2 as a starter. But in the last half of the season, Nebraska played like the Nebraska of old. When they held on to the ball, Eric Crouch and company were unstoppable. Mike Brown and the defense made quarterbacks miserable down the stretch. Nebraska's won 10 straight games against SEC teams. If the Huskers don't fumble and can get to T. Martin, Frank Solich and the boys from Lincoln will make it 11. And now the boldness continues with Dan Lebatar. 
Boston College coach Tom O'Brien says Michael Vick is every bit as spectacular and poised in his freshman year as Charlie Ward and Donovan McNabb were in their senior years. But is that enough to topple a program that has gone 108-13-1 and this decade? FSU, vastly more accustomed to this kind of stage than Virginia Tech, is unbeaten and undaunted, having won by an average of more than 21 points against what is rated the nation's sixth toughest schedule. The Seminoles might be fighting rust more than anything, coming off a 45-day layoff. Coach Bobby Bowden turned up the intensity on practices in December because the last time his team had this much time off, it went out and lost last year's national championship to Tennessee. How they deal with the rust will certainly be a big factor. And John, we've talked the entire time. The aim of the BCS is to give us a national championship game, and it's done that. But outside of that, you want to maintain some regional ties and give very heavyweight marquee matchups. And it's tough to beat the Orange Bowl for that. Oh, and the Big Ten and the SEC love these kinds of matchups. This is where the big boys really like to take each other on. You're going to get a team like Alabama that's won more bowl games than anyone, a team like Michigan that's won more games, period, than anyone. What do they bring to the game? They both bring great history, but they bring excellent coaching, tough teams, and both teams like to hold on to the ball. Alabama, 33 minutes a game. Michigan, almost 32 minutes a game. Time of possession. Third down's the critical thing. For Alabama, 43% uh, third down conversions. Michigan, 47% third down conversions. This is one of those games where it's going to be slug back, back until somebody gives. And you know, it might be a preview also. Both teams just lose a handful of starters, and of course the Orange Bowl would be the aim for next season as well. You know what, if you're going to play on our ball club, if you're going to be a sideline reporter or an analyst, you got to be able to take a lick. And the Dr. Jerry Punch can, and he'll let us know who took the best licks throughout the season in a bit. the year, the century, and you're invited. It's the Tempe Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Block Party on Millennium Avenue. Bring in the new year with six stages of live entertainment featuring Sugar Ray, Billy Idol, Funk Junkies, and Muggy On featuring Dwayne Moore. Games and rides for kids and fireworks. Advanced tickets are $20 and $25 the day of the show. Get yours at Valley Fries with your Fries VIP card. It's the party of the century. Searching for a website? AccessArizona.com makes finding sites faster and easier than ever. And AccessArizona.com reviews local websites, so the best ones are brought right to your fingertips. AccessArizona.com, the best local site on the web. Great moments in college sports make great memories and often inspire great achievement beyond the game. Come see it all at the Hall, the new NCAA Hall of Champions, place to relive the action, savor the memories, discover what it means to be a true champion, and that might be the greatest moment sports has ever produced. The NCAA Hall of Champions, opening in downtown Indianapolis in March 2000. century countdown is over but if you missed any of it you won't want to miss this the 50 greatest athletes marathon starts tonight 7 30 eastern time right here on espn2 so get a fresh batch of tapes and get the vcr ready it's been a terrific series and you can relive it starting at 7 30 eastern time tonight well you know so many times throughout the course of the season we talk about tackles being missed and how that's going to get you beat but Sometimes tackling is about a little bit more than just wrapping your arms around a guy and bringing him to the ground. Sometimes there needs to be an explosion, slobber flying. And who better to tell us the effects on the human body than our own Dr. Jerry Punch. 
When we were young, we would say that the shin bone was connected to the thigh bone, which is connected to the hip bone. As we grew older, we understood that really meant the tibia is connected to the femur, which is connected to the pelvis. Well, football is a whole lot simpler than that. You see, the offense wants the football firmly connected to their hands, whereas the defense wants to disconnect the two. Those differing philosophies mean that something has to give, and that something usually is the human body. lacerations, abrasions, and even contusions. And folks, those weren't even the biggest hits of the year. So let's take a look at our top five. Here, Virginia Tech defender Ike Charlton tests the structural integrity of Syracuse wide receiver Pat Woodcock's cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae. Number four, Longhorn's Aaron Humphrey does an up-close and personal examination of Texas Tech quarterback Cliff Kingsbury's eyes, ears, nose, and throat. Number three, Temple receiver Jamal Wallace zips across the middle, only to have Pitt Panther Kareem Thompson take his breath away with this frontal shoulder pad compression of the thorax. Number two, Pittsburgh's Antonio Bryant now understands that inertia and momentum are irrelevant, particularly when West Virginia's Barrett Green uses force that overrides his man. And number one, Georgia's Bruce Adrien makes the sack but goes quickly from top dog to getting dog, courtesy of teammate Charles Grant. Further examination shows the only injury here was probably a bruised ego. The good news is, with time, almost all wounds will heal. I'm Dr. Jerry Punch reminding you that in football, as with the holidays, it is usually better to give than receive. Happy holidays, everyone. And speaking of the bruised egos, fortunately, John, that's the only thing that anybody got hurt in those hits that you saw right there. A couple of good hits on a kick return that Louisville turned in in the first half against Boise State. Zeke Parker took a kickoff, took it 91 yards to the house, got a couple of good blocks, including one right there. We're going to get you back and talk more about the second half in just a bit. A significant discovery in eye health may be lutein, a nutrient found in these healthy foods. Now Centrum has the only leading multivitamins with lutein to help maintain your precious sight. Centrum, Centrum Silver, now more complete with lutein. Every day he works on his speed. He works on his agility and he works in his power. So when Sunday comes around, he makes the other team work. K-Swiss. We didn't invent the idea of handpicking 20 exceptional stocks for a powerful fund, but we have practically perfected it. Call 1-888-4-STRONG today. You're one call away from a strong portfolio. There's only one place to be on a Saturday afternoon, and that's at the game. NCAA football. Pass it on. Louisville up 24-21 at halftime of the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. John, what do you expect to see in the second half? Uh, first thing, you have to get warmed up again. I don't think he, both teams will be able to do it. And then is Ivan Green back for Chris Redmond? Certain, uh, a certain amount of comfort level right there for, uh, for Chris Redmond if he does have his longtime teammate played together since junior high school in the eighth grade. We're going to get you back out to Boise for the second half of the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. A lot of offense in the first half and more probably coming. Wayne Larravee and Randy Wright after this. 
Are you confused by all the talk going around about satellite TV? Do you have to buy the dish or can you rent it? Can you install it yourself? Will it work on all your TVs? Is programming included? And what about service, repair? Before you gamble with your hard-earned cash, call 1-888-SAT-INFO to get this free brochure with all the answers. Just call 1-888-SAT-INFO for your brochure. It's a sure bet and it's free. Wasting time instead of finding what you want. AccessArizona.com makes finding exactly what you want faster and easier than ever. Just use the Find It Fast feature and go directly to what you're looking for. AccessArizona.com, the best local site on the web. This is Boise State University, shaped by its location in one of America's most dynamic small cities located in the midst of an unsurpassed natural environment. Boise State is a place where students connect to the world around them, from high technology to high culture, where student opportunities abound in an extensive internship program, where students use the great western outdoors as their classroom and as their playground. Boise State University, real education for the real world. Coming back out onto the field, set for the second half of the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Wayne Larravee along with Randy Wright. And down to the sidelines, Mike Gleason. It's a cold day in Boise, but boy, it's been a hot day for these two offenses. They've put together 45 points between them, run 87 plays, and 546 yards of offense. And that's just the first half. How, how'd you like to have 260-some yards of offense and not even be close to leading? <laughs> Let's take a look at the highlights of the first half. Boy, we saw many, many big plays in the first half, and it lived up to Billy. Take a look at this one. I love this. You called it the Elway spin. Spins around to the back, has a nice job of keeping his head upfield, and hits a wide open Arnold Jackson for the first score. But Redmond did run into some problems. Watch this. The hit, and then the interception, and Chenard Hartz goes 80 yards with an interception return for a touchdown. At that point, it was 21-17. Boise State, but then a quick toss. Dorsey, uh, Damian Dorsey on the reception from uh, Chris Redman and Louisville leads at halftime by three. Take a look at these numbers and remember this is just for a half. <laughs> oh my. Both teams pretty good on third down, but the one that really stands out to me, Wayne, along with the penalties, especially with Louisville, is the 20-plus yard plays. We thought it'd be Louisville with the big plays. It's been Boise State. So we've got a second half coming up in the third humanitarian bowl, and this one should be as high scoring as any that have been played before it. And what we have a uh, bunch of nice balloons here. The festivities at halftime have gone a little bit longer, as they generally do, and bowl game situations. Individual statistics in the first half of play. Take a look at it. Chris Redman doing a nice job. Only 13 for 26, but he's made some key third down conversions. He's got the two touchdowns. Moreau almost 80 yards in the first half. That, I think, will come into play more in the second half, the success, if they can continue that. For Boise State, Hendricks having a nice day, 216 yards. And Forsey, the surprise in the running game for Boise State, stepping up and having some big plays. Well, Mike Gleason's been nosing around the locker rooms to talk with the coaches. Mike, what'd you find out? Well, Wayne, we talked with uh, Dirk Cutter, and he said they're happy with their zone blitz. So they didn't expect uh, too many interceptions against uh, Chris Redman. But he said that if they could continue to reroute the receivers, they feel like they have Redman off balance just a little bit. But they have to tackle better. They felt like there was too many missed tackles in the first half. And he said, definitely, we have to stop turning the football over. On the other side of the football field, John L. Smith that just left the locker room a couple of minutes ago. He said, we just have to strap it up. The team that's toughest mentally will win this football game. Of course, they got the 80-yard uh, touchdown on the interception, but he said if we just strap it up and play our game and be mentally tough, we'll be fine. Thank you, Mike. Well, as the day wears on, Randy, and dusk begins to settle in on the valley here at Boise, uh, it's going to get a little chillier out there. Take a look at the uh, passes and, and the distribution of those throws from Bart Hendricks. And wide receivers really... Uh, They've been open downfield, and the quarterbacks have not been shy to go that way. No, and that's why we've seen Boise State with seven plays of over 20 yards. When you're throwing to your wide receivers that much, that's what's going to happen. 
The officials set to get everybody together. 50-yard line. I have really been impressed with Bart Hendricks. His complete game, not just the statistical comparison with Redmond. Redmond had the big name coming in here, and, and I think Redmond is a quality, quality quarterback. But Bart Hendricks seems to really have the complete package. He runs the ball well. He reads things well. Gets his shoulders turned quickly to get the ball up the field. I have really been impressed with him in the first half. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl on ESPN tonight, 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 on the West Coast. Clemson Tigers and 16th-ranked Mississippi State Bulldogs from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Georgia. Coverage begins with bowl game night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time here on ESPN. ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network. Go.com. Didn't take Tommy Bout long to turn that Clemson program around from 3-8 last year into a bowl in his first year. He did an outstanding job, no question about it. Louisville will kick off to start the second half. John Hilbert, good leverage and depth into this kick. Carries deep into the end zone, and Boise State will settle for it at the 20-yard line in Bronco territory. John Hilbert, got good leverage into that kick, and Martin Hendricks, the junior from Reno, Nevada, just... An outstanding first half for him for the most part. This is the third offense he's been in. He was recruited by Pokey Allen, who passed away early in his career. He's also played under Houston Nutt, who was here for one year and then went down to Arkansas, and now Dirk Cutter. And he's just a junior. He's got another year to come back and maybe even get a little bit better. First down at the 20-yard line. Third time the Broncos have started at their own 20. Hendricks play action right to the air, right to his wide receiver, Swilly, and the pass play broke it up. Holman had the coverage on the far side. Wayne, there's one adjustment I think Louisville will make defensively. I think they'll tighten up the coverage by their corners on these wide receivers. They've been given a little too much cushion. It makes it a little too easy a throw by the quarterback. I expect to see Holman number two, Roundtree number three, maybe a couple of steps closer. Make Hendricks throw the ball deep in that's a lower percentage throw. Second and ten. Forsey is the lone setback. Brock Forsey met a wall of white jerseys. Did get a good push forward for two yards out to the 22, or it'll be third down and eight yards to go for Boise State. This is unfamiliar territory for the Broncos. They were so good in the first half on first down, they didn't face many third down and long, so it's really hard to predict what Louisville's going to do. Do they come with the blitz? Do they play back in the zone? Boise State hadn't seen this very much. Hart Hendricks, pretty good feet. The uh, Boise State defensive people. Uh, Coach Chris uh, Smeelan was talking about the fact that when they do blitz, they've got to stay in their lanes and contain this quarterback. He is fleet afoot. Third down. Let's it go to Forsey. Got a first down and a whole lot more. Brock Forsey inside the 30-yard line of Louisville. Well executed screen. Anthony Floyd brought him down from behind. 50-yard gain. Sometimes you just guess right. And Boise State picked the right play at the right time. Louisville only coming with four. He saw the pressure get back there. Hendricks did a nice job of bringing the pressure to him. And watch Forsey follow his blocks. Nice block right there. And boy, that just opens up. It's a long time before you see a white jersey in that picture. Brock Forsey had 66 yards rushing in the first half, including a 31-yard run. This time through the air, he gets a 50-yarder, and here's the handoff, Forsey driving forward up the middle. Brock Forsey with authority down to the 21-yard line. On a gain of six yards, Reggie Hargrove made the stop. And got an injured Cardinal down on the field. Courtney Dinkins, the uh, fine safety, shaken up on the play. He's a signal caller back there, making today his 41st consecutive start, so he brings a lot of experience to that secondary. Yeah, he would be a major loss in that defensive secondary if he's not able to return. Opening minutes of this second half, John L. Smith, the head coach at Louisville, looking on with concern. As I mentioned, both coaches are from uh, Idaho. John L. was born in uh, Idaho Falls, and Dirk Cutter from Pocatello, Idaho. 
Got a break in the action. We'll take a timeout. 24-21 Louisville early going third quarter. Cut that pizza or what? For fresh baked pizza at home, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. My dad taught me what it means to be a true fan. What it means to come out and give 110%. Right, Dad? Yeah! <laughs> I'm, I'm more the quiet thing. Oh, yeah! Well, the cold doesn't bother me so much. It's the chili dogs. Oh. That's why I bring out the Rolaids. Rolaid starts to neutralize acid in less than 10 seconds, getting you back on your game fast. It's just like Grandpa always says. You gotta be your best out here. Rolaids, R-O-L-A-I-D-S, spells relief. Mom doesn't make it out to the games. I don't know why. Global leading 24-21 in the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Along with Randy Wright, Mike Leeson, this is Wayne Larravee from Bronco Stadium in Boise, Idaho. Yes, on the blue turf. <laughs> well... Courtney Dick can shake it up and watch this here. Lou Fanuki coming in to block as a wide receiver. Those defensive backs don't like people around their knees, and coaches tell you you got to keep your head on a swivel and always be prepared. And that time Fanuki made a nice block. Boise State trailing by three. Opening two minutes of play in this third quarter. 4C running hard. Rashad Harris, the linebacker, met him in the hole. Gain of a couple of more yards. It'll be third and short coming up for Boise State. Louisville, I think, Wayne, needs to start doing something defensively to take Boise State out of their rhythm. They haven't blitzed very much. Their linebackers have stayed in pass coverage more than they've been in the backfield, and that has allowed Hendricks plenty of time to view the field, pick out a receiver, and he's been very effective. I think they need to start changing things up and keep Hendricks guessing. Third and one. Four seed. Should have the first down. He got by Gantos, who made an arm tackle attempt on him in the hole and then slid to his right. It appears he's got the first down to the 16-yard line. The bird cutter told us yesterday that he just plays these backs by field. There's no written formula. There's no predetermined schedule. He just plays them by field. He wants to stick with the hot back. And I think the way this game is going, we're going to see a lot of Brock Forsey in the second half. Well, Malathon is a physical back. Gavin Reed is the most athletic of the backs. And Brock Forsey, they feel, will be a good one. And again, they felt that Brent Myers told us that he this kid had a great preparation for this bowl game, and he's playing a huge role here today. Forsey again. Not a whole lot there. Tough sledding up the middle against that Louisville front. Gain of a yard to the 15, and it's second down at nine. Wayne, we saw the block on Courtney Dinkins, the free safety for Louisville a couple of plays ago. He's got a sprained medial collateral and is out for the game. Ooh. Will not be back. That is a huge loss in the middle of the secondary for the Louisville Cardinals. Especially in a game like this where you're playing a team that spreads the ball out so much, you have to get a play without much experience back there. That's the signal caller. He's the one that's got to get their people in the right position. Curry Burns has replaced Dinkins in the lineup, and Hendricks back to the nose, screens it out. Forsey spins off one would-be tackler, but did well just to get back to the 15-yard line. It looked like the uh, Cardinals had a pretty well snuffed out out in front of that play. Gantos, Arp, and also Corey Wallace. Nice play over there. Looked as though there were a lot of white jerseys. Jeremy Collins, one of the Louisville Cardinals over there, though he doesn't make the tackle, makes a hit on the back and prevents him from getting the yardage as the rest of his team, the pursuit catches up. So does third down. Third and about 10. Hendrix 
Here's the short drop. Pass cradled on the play near the nine yard line and close to the, well, O'Neill makes the reception. He's about four yards short of the first down and that brings the field goal unit on to try to tie this ball game. So important when you're throwing timing passing plays, in cuts, out cuts, especially the slants like this, you've got to hit your receiver in stride. You throw the ball behind him, he loses all of his momentum, he's got to stop and then it's an easy play for the defensive back to come up. 26 yard field goal attempt. Kalia Kai. And it is good. So after missing from 40 plus yards twice in the first half, Kalia Kai gets the game tied. The opening five minutes of the second half. Western city. Well, maybe I can help too. I'll be right there. For headaches, doctors recommend Tylenol more than any other brand. It's the most trusted combination of strength and safety and pain relief today. Don't forget the soft one. I knew the ice cream would help. Tylenol. Take comfort in our strength. The last game of the millennium. It's time to send 1999 out with a bang. The Sanford Independence Bowl, Ole Miss, Oklahoma at 8.30, Friday on ESPN. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 1999 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl is brought to you by Visa. It's everywhere you want to be. And by DiGiorno Rising Crust Pizza. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Mike Gleason, great to have you with us. Now the Bronco fans are happy at the moment. They've got the game tied, finally. A seesaw first half, and Boise State scores the first three points of the second half. Kickoff by Brent Thompson. And back with it, Justin Thomas. And it'll be a first down just across the 30-yard line. They've not wanted to go to Zeke Parker since Parker returned 191 yards. But there is Brett Thompson. He's a big old boy. Can play a little defensive tackle for you, I would imagine, and hold the line. Not your atypical kicker is what you're saying, huh? <laughs> first and 10. 33-yard line. Louisville territory, Chris Redman and company. Boy. It was a little overzealousness on that uh, front line by Bradley Phillips. I don't know if he was drawn, but he sure did pour over the line. Side. On the defense. Five yard penalty. The first drive of each half, Wayne, is so important. And now Louisville comes out. They've had a chance to sit here. And, and stand on the sideline as Boise State came down and got something out of their first drive. Louisville, with this five yards, will have very good field position, see if they can continue the mixture that they had success with in the first half, the running game with Burrow and the passing game. They need to protect Redmond better, though. He's been running around for his life back there. First and five, Louisville. Moreau, the long setback. Motion from Lavelle Boyd. Frank Moreau met in the hole by Brett Johnson, the linebacker. He storms the hole. All Big West first team selection and the leader of the Bronco defense. 
Well, we talked about him earlier. He's only been a linebacker for a couple of years. He was a tight end and a fullback in high school, and that's how he came in. He has led this team in tackles in 97, 98, and again this year. Three receivers set. Slot to the bottom of your screen. Redmond to the air under a blitz. Let's it go to Moreau, who bobbled it, dropped it, and kicked it. Incomplete. It looked like a blown coverage by the Bronco defense, and Redmond did a nice job of throwing the ball and hitting Moreau in stride again. The intent to keep him in his rhythm, and yet he just takes his eyes off the ball. You see his head looking upfield before he catches it. You get that ball to him early enough, he would have had plenty of room there to put a move on the defensive back to so maybe turn that into a bigger play. Louisville, 5 of 10 today on third down. A little bit better than their 44% coming into today's game. Five receivers set. Redmond alone in the vacant backfield. Under some pressure over the middle he goes. Lavelle Boyd makes the catch, and Kareem Williams brings him down close to the first down near the 44-yard line. It appears they have picked it up. But that was pretty good recovery by Williams, the linebacker, on a fleet wide receiver. Well, it was pretty good recovery, but he also has to get around the official. You see the umpire right there. Watch how Boyd goes right underneath him mm. and forces Williams to go around. And when you only need five yards, it's that's a play. A, that's a pick play, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was there to call it, though. Yeah, well, you know. Where's that back judge when you need him? When you employ the arbiters, I guess it's legal. First and ten. Good block from Ivan Green. Good to see him back on the field. Written out of bounds by Shenard Hartz near the midfield marker, a gain of six. Ivan Green was shaken up, the tight end for Louisville in the first half. We have not seen him really be a part of the passing game, Randy. I, I believe they've thrown at him maybe once here today, but uh, he is in there as a blocker right now. Well, Ivan Green and Lavelle Boyd, neither one of them played a major part in the first half, and they need to get these guys involved. They're the players that have contributed. They need to in the second half. Here comes Arnold Jackson. A lot of quickness. Johnson rides him down from behind. Johnson, I'll tell you what, he's got some good speed, excellent athlete, explosive as we've seen with his hits in the hole. He was a Butkus Award nominee earlier this year. Take a look again. Many teams call this a bubble screen. They just get it out to their receivers quickly as they can. Nice blocking downfield by the wide receivers. You saw Boyd throw a nice block, and Jackson is also dangerous when he gets out in the open field. It is first down Louisville at the Boise State 43. Moreau rambling through a hole, splits a couple of defenders close to the first down of the 34-yard line. Hearts and D's on the stop, gain of nine. Jason Padgett is a junior a junior college transfer. Take a look at the hole that opens up right there. Just a quick hitting play. Padgett playing center for the first time. Was a tackle. Comes off the ball, though, very well and opens up a hole. When you give Moreau that kind of room that quickly, he gets that momentum going. Moreau 95 yards on 17 carries so far. Aaron Dardzinski, one of the guards. The Louisville guards are a little bit undersized at 260 and 285, but they do have some nice tackles. Anthony Bird, almost 300, and Mark Rivna, 6'10 and 335 on the flanks. As the man shaken up on the play was Shenard Hartz, the safety, and he heads off under his own power. And when you talk about that offensive line being a little undersized, they've taken some criticism this year, both guards and the center, Jason Padgett, although he's the biggest at 295 pounds, but yet this offensive line, the tackles being the best, have produced a 3,000-yard passer and a 1,000-yard rusher. I'd say that's pretty good. Very good production. Second down. Second down, a little bit less than two yards to go. Redmond under a blitz gets it away. Ivan Green, the tight end for a first down, spinning his way inside the 20-yard line. To the 19, Brian Johnson makes the stop, 15-yard gain. We talked earlier that Boise State had a lot of success on three-step drops, getting the arms up, knocking the ball down. That time, didn't get his hands up, didn't get in the way to knock the ball down. It gave Redmond the passing lane, and when you get the ball to one of these dangerous receivers on the outside, they're going to pick up yards, and that time got him a first down. Maroon the long set back, first down at the 19-yard line of Boise State. Louisville on the drive. It's first offensive possession of the second half. This is Moreau. Into traffic. 
at the 17-yard line, gain of a couple of yards. So Brian Williams, number 42 for Boise State, stick his head in there and make the tackle. He's really overcome injuries his first two years and really come into his own this year for the first time. He's a, a very athletic playmaker, had an excellent year, only 218 pounds though, and for a linebacker, that's been pretty small. They've been worried that he's not been able to withstand as games go on, but that time steps up, makes a nice play. Well, he uh, returned an interception, 44 yards for a touchdown at Idaho and returned a fumble for a touchdown against Eastern in Washington this season. Second down, and Redmond needs a timeout. 6.59 left to go, third quarter of a tie ball game, Boise State and Louisville. Find people just like you. Go to AccessArizona.com. Find the best local clubs and organizations and share interests and ideas. AccessArizona.com, the best local site on the web. Need a place to go? AccessArizona.com's got local course reviews and other useful things like local forecasts and shopping. AccessArizona.com, the best local site on the web. Center every night for a preview of the 2000 SPs. Log on to ESPN.com for the Performer of the Decade nominees. Compare your picks with ESPN's when the awards are televised February 14. Watch Sports Center or log on to ESPN for a preview. Hoops and Ice get set for a Big East Bash. Come on, come on. There's a bomber in the Big Apple and his name is Bootsy. The Red Storm pair up with the Panthers. Pittsburgh St. John's Monday at 7 on ESPN2. Gleason back in Boise. Louisville now, second down at eight yards to go. They move the football to the 17-yard line of Boise State. Redmond waited as long as he could into the end zone and beyond. Lavelle Boyd, the intended receiver. Shenard Hartz has returned to the lineup. And Damian Schilling was also there. Nice coverage by Damian Schilling. He came off of his man when he saw where Redmond was going to throw the ball to deep into the corner. He came off of his man, ran straight to the corner, and was cutting off Lavelle Board so there would have been no chance for that ball to be complete. Third down. Take a look at this drive. It's been a long one. 50 yards at nine plays. Taking over three minutes. Inside of seven minutes to go in the third. Blitz coming. They picked it up pretty well. Redmond looking around. Side arms it over the middle. Oh, great catch. Lavelle Boyd. First and goal inside the 10-yard line. Redmond had to thread the needle, and indeed he did. And Lavelle Boyd able to latch on. McKeish Brooks, who was shaken up, and Shenard Hartz collaborate on the stop. 12-yard gain. Nice throw by Redmond. If you have any questions about his arm strength, they should have been answered right there. He's backpedaling here, throws that ball with all arm right on the money. Lavelle Boyd making a contribution here on this drive, Wayne. They've gotten him involved in this offense. Uh, he must have heard your remarks earlier in this quarter, huh? Must not have liked them. No, probably didn't. Louisville spreads the formation. Boyd in motion. Moreau gets the carry, and he's ramped up on the play quickly by Andy Bennett. Andy Bennett, fourth in the Big West in quarterback sacks. That time made a good move against the run and a gain of maybe a half yard. Second and goal to go coming up for Louisville. Did a nice job of getting underneath the block. Sometimes you expect as an offensive lineman, the defensive end to go to the outside for containment. That time Bennett comes underneath, guesses right, and wraps up the back for a nice tackle. In the red zone today, 50% touchdowns. Redmond on the roll. Intercepted. Damian Schilling out to the 20 yard line. They brought the pressure.
pressure once again, Randy. Redman running for his life, ill-advised throw into traffic. I think Redmond misread that coverage, thinking it was banned. It actually was a zone blitz, and Schilling came off of his man and made that catch. But you've got to protect better than this. There you see Schilling is on Parker, but Schilling looks into the backfield. There's the ball, which looks, I believe, is going to Boyd on the out route, and Schilling comes right up, steps in front of him, and makes the interception. Well, Randy, they had two receivers at the end of that play right within five yards of each other. Well, I, I, I think they did a nice... Nice job of disguising that coverage and fooled Redmond. First down, football just short of the 20-yard line. Brock Forsey picks his way, and just a sliver of an opening in the Louisville defense. Rashad Harris, Jeremy Collins collaborate on the stop. Now that's a play where you look at the quarterback and he throws the interception and he's the final say because he doesn't have to throw the ball. But it goes back to the protection, or in that case, the lack of protection. There are four blue jerseys in the backfield right as the ball was snapped. You know what I've been impressed with is the Boise State quickness up front on the line. Much better, much better than, than I thought coming into this game for an offensive line that only gave up 20 sacks all year. Hendricks, little pop fly down the sidelines, well covered by Rashad Holman. And a penalty marker down. Maybe the coverage was too good on Mike Davidson. That flag came in late, yeah. but the back judge was reaching for it earlier. He just couldn't quite get the flag out. And I think this may be holding more than interference. And that is interference. Yeah. I was thinking maybe for a moment Davidson may have stepped out of bounds on that route. You know, that, that could have been the case also, but it's against Louisville. Well, Holman is their best cover guy, and they have tightened up this coverage here. On the defense, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. We talked about Louisville tightening up the coverage a little bit. They've done that. Take a look here and see if we can see the interference. Davidson going to the outside. Oh, boy, I, I don't know. That, that's. I didn't see it. I think that's pretty good coverage there. I didn't see it at all. Hendricks rolls, now steps up, got a man wide open over the middle, inside the 30-yard line, it's a first down, and the reception made by Andre Banks, Corey Wallace made the stop, 36-yard gain. Well, because of the protection, this time we see Hendricks plenty of times steps up to throw. As he does, he brings number 52 Harris up to protect against the run. When your linebacker's got deep pass coverage and he's got to come up fearing the run, it opens up the middle of that. Just the opposite, though, with what we've seen with Redmond. Hendricks has all day to throw. He's making the plays. Redmond doesn't have hardly any time, and he's not making them. For the big play category, the biggest surprise of the day. Louisville came in here with a lot of firepower, a lot of big play people. Forsey runs into a wave and is hammered down on the play. Boy, they just ran straight into Michael Brown, and he put him away. That kid's a man, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> He's only 200 pounds, but he plays much stronger than that. And as a redshirt freshman, as he gets stronger and more mature, he is really going to be a force to be reckoned with. There's a look at Michael Brown. Bandit. The way they use that bandit, it's more of a, a strong safety, middle linebacker combination, and he can do it all. He can cover, and he can blitz. Loss of four. Hendricks, able to escape, gets it away, and incomplete. Through the hands of the tight end, Stahelski, and the coverage provided on the play by Curry Burns downfield. Otis Floyd got a piece of the quarterback as he was able to get by. Barnes doing a nice job of just focusing on Stahelski, knowing that that's where the ball was going, and he was going to make the hit. Not going for the pass breakup or the interception at all. Was there just in time, put a nice hit on him. So it becomes third down. Last time in this position, Boise State runs the draw to a lot of success. We'll see what they do this time. They roll the quarterback, Hendricks, his pass off the mark, intended for Jay Swilling, and he absorbed a hit from Antonio Roundtree. That's the kind of play where the wide receiver comes back to the quarterback and says, why did you do that to me? <laughs> well, and that's, I've been in those shoes many a times, and 
It, with the blitz that time, Hendricks saw the blitz coming early, was protected pretty well, and threw a rare bad pass. We've seen Hendricks hit those open receivers all day. Another 40-plus yard field goal attempt for Nick Kalayakai. This one from 46 yards away. To the uprights, no good. Oh, it's off the crossbar and good! Oh, my! Somehow that stayed in, and Kalayakai had just enough to get it over the crossbar. State takes the lead. This is the, the farthest of his kicks, 46 yards, which is the farthest of his career. And he just kicks this ball much more solid, and it bounces off that upright and goes up. And Boy, they didn't know right till the very end. He's seen a couple of those dead straight, but falls short. That one couldn't tell, so it bounces off and goes through. Mike Gleason's got a special guest. Well, Wayne, over the years, there's been a very impressive list of athletes from the state of Idaho, but last night, Harmon Killebrew and Peekaboo Street were awarded the Athletes of the Century in the state of Idaho. Over 1,700 people voted. Harmon Killebrew, a Hall of Famer with 573 home runs. Peekaboo Street, the gold medalist, the first American to win the World Cup uh, Series title. Joining me right now, Harmon Killebrew, 573 home runs. That is quite an honor. Athlete of the Century in the state of Idaho. Well, that's very hard for me to believe, Mike. As you said, there were so many great athletes came out of this state for a small state and so I'm, I'm deeply honored. 573 home runs. Ted Williams once said you were probably the most intelligent hitter he's seen. Most people think of you as being a home run hitter. Well coming from Ted Williams that's a great compliment. He's uh, the greatest hitter I ever saw and probably the greatest hitter of all time. All right, Harmon, thanks for joining us. Harmon Killebrew, 573 home runs. No one in the American League, Wayne, has hit more home runs except for a guy by the name of Babe Ruth. Up to you. Thank you much, Mike. Penalty marker late on that play as finally Zeke Parker got an opportunity to return a kickoff. First time he's been able to do that since his 91-yard return. Justin Howell made the stop at the 30-yard line. Well, Boise State has had the ball for the majority here. On a receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. They've had the ball for the majority here in this second half, Wayne, but they've only got field goals out of it. They haven't been able to put the ball in the end zone. Louisville, after that penalty, still takes over on their 20-yard line, down by just three. Louisville, 12 penalties, Randy, 110 yards against. And you know, a lot of them are foolish penalties. They're, they're not the kind of penalties that affect the play itself. They're the unsportsmanlike. They're the, the face masks, the, the needless ones. Redmond and company trailing by three. Frank Perot met in the hole and rooted out by the linebacker Kareem Williams. I'll tell you what, those two linebackers, Johnson and Williams, they are tough, Boy, tough little guys, aren't they? They are fantastic. Neither one of them are very big, both of them under 225 pounds, but together they've combined this year. 175 tackles, 27 tackles for loss, nine and a half sacks, two TD returns, and a blocked field goal. Frank Moreau is as big as both of those linebackers. He's 6'1 and 225. Redmond. Ivan Green made the first man and the second man miss has got the first down. Doesn't appear like Green is moving the way we know he can. He's playing hurt out there this afternoon, but he picks up the first down, eight-yard gain. And Wayne, the kind of injury that he had, the thigh bruise, that's the thing that tightens up when you're not out there running around. He had a long halftime. It's a cold day. It's the kind of thing I think will continue to tighten up and maybe even get worse as this day gets colder. Receiver set. Moreau cuts it back. Found some running room, but again, good reaction from the Boise State defense. Mike Leeson, uh, we've been talking about the courage of Ivan Green, and, and I'll tell you something, he's a tough kid. He overcame some adversity earlier this season. A near tragic uh, uh, mishap that we'll get to as soon as this next play is run as Louisville goes without a huddle. Redmond going over the top, got a man out there. Jackson caught it out of play. Jackson was out of play. Mike? 
Yeah, Wayne, he's actually uh, nursing that sore quad, but he's probably lucky to be here. Back in November, they were in Cincinnati getting ready for a game. After the walkthrough, the team went back to the team hotel, and about eight players got into the elevator. The doors started to close and open, and some of the players started getting off of the elevator. Ivan Green was the last to do so, and the cable snapped, and the elevator plunged down to the basement. They thought maybe he had died or at least severed a limb, and it turned out that he spent the night at the hospital, had 30 stitches. He came back and caught seven balls for 100 yards. So this guy has one tough cookie, Wayne. Thank you, Mike. Penalty markers down. Looked like a false start against Louisville. Penalties really adding up on the uh, Cardinals here. Well start. A false start. No questioning the uh, toughness of Ivan Green. And really, both of these squads, Randy, have been through a lot over the course of, of their four and, in some cases, five years on these two campuses. And I got a feeling that's going to make for a pretty dramatic finish to this uh, the third annual Humanitarian Bowl game. And I think, Wayne, that's one reason why it means so much to these players. You see Ivan Green playing in his last game. He didn't want to come out even though he's probably not 100%. These programs have both been turned around. Seniors have been through a lot. They want to end with a win. Redmond going over the top, trying to hit Jackson. Arnold Jackson was double covered that time. And the coverage of Damian Bowie and Shenard Hartz bracketed around him. This is the third annual Humanitarian Bowl. The Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. We're at Bronco Stadium in Boise. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Mike Leeson. Great to have you with us this holiday season. And we wish you all the best for the next millennium coming up. You can see this Boise State team, Wayne, both offensively and defensively, gaining confidence, and this crowd getting more into the game is contributing to that. Savori in punt formation. Schilling driven back to his 23. Damian Schilling out across the 35-yard line. Boise State will put it in play, first and 10 near the 36. National Hockey League night on ESPN. The San Jose Sharks and the Chicago Blackhawks. Sunday, January 2nd, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Owen Nolan of the Sharks among the league leaders in goals, assists, and points. And Doug Gilmore answers for Chicago. Team looking to get back into the playoff package. ESPN and ABC now the exclusive networks for all NHL action. ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. First and ten, Boise State. Under two minutes to go, third quarter. Just three points scored so far in the third period. Play action. Hendricks under pressure immediately, able to escape. Martin Hendricks, for a while earlier this season, was the best runner for this Boise State team. And he picks up about four yards there. Rashad Harris caught up with him. Today, 27 yards on five carries. But boy, Randy, what impresses me so much about him is, number one, he has very quick feet. We knew that. But he has a great feel for pressure. It's not just how athletic are you back there, but you have a feel for pressure. And he runs around not looking to run to gain yards as much as looking to buy some time and then make the big play downfield. Second down and six. Is close to the first down near the 45-yard line. Rashad Harris in the middle of the linebacking core made the stop for Louisville. One thing I don't think we'll see, Wayne, as this third quarter here comes to an end, I don't think we'll see Boise State go conservative. They were conservative earlier this season. They really struggled offensively. As their receivers grew, Dirk Cutter just made a decision. We're just going to let it all go, and that's where Hendricks really started to develop. Well, Randy, the turning point was a disappointing loss at North Texas State. And at that point... They decided to turn these kids loose to open up the offense and just start attacking. They weren't a very good ball control team. They don't have a dominant running back like a Frank Burrow. They are a running back by committee, so to speak. And as they've allowed their wide receivers, you said, to get some experience, they opened up the offense for Bart Hendricks. And, and believe me, he was the key to making that work. And he still is. And even though they are playing with the lead right here, I think even if they they add to this lead, you're still going to see them attack offensively as well as defensively. Over the top, incomplete. Bart Hendricks, good coverage down the right sidelines on Lou Fanuki. 
He had uh, Rashad Holman and Corey Wallace with him. I mean, this is one of the most difficult throws for a young quarterback to make. And young, I mean in college. When you throw the ball deep, we saw Redmond do it earlier when he had Jackson open. He threw the ball out of bounds. Young quarterbacks tend to throw the ball to where the receiver is. And if the receiver doesn't give himself room, he goes out of bounds. You've got to keep the ball on the field. Pick a spot five yards inside. Throw it there. The receiver's got to get there. Second and ten. Sets up a screen, deflected incomplete. Donovan Arp, the defensive tackle, got a piece of it and blew up that play, forcing third and ten. Donovan Arp has really been the key to this defense and the success that they've had this year. He comes in as one of the hardest working players. They needed him to help immediately, and he has contributed not only with sacks and tackles for loss, but in the run game. That time, realizes he can't get to Hendricks, puts his arms up there, and knocks down the ball with what could have been a successful screen had he not done that. Arp and Gantos last year were defensive ends. Arp at Snow Junior College in Salt Lake, and Gantos, of course, at Louisville. Third down to 10. Hendricks in a tight pocket. Not going to get away this time. Down he goes. Otis Floyd, the defensive end, makes the sack. The first of the day for the Louisville defense, and it forces a punt. Wait, wait you talked about them. You talked about them being defensive ends last year. Arp and Gantos, now that they're defensive tackles, they still got that speed, though. Third quarter comes to a close. Lavelle Boyd with... You take a look at it. The Louisville Cardinals, Boise State Broncos head to the fourth quarter play. Lavelle Boyd, the happy smile. John L. Smith, the shake of the head. And Boise State celebrates the lead field goal. Merger mania. Two companies hook up and everybody goes crazy. Janice gets beyond the hype, digs deeper into the data, and finds out what's really going on. Janice even showed up in person at one company's sales convention for a reality check with salesmen who predicted their merger would alienate customers and sales would suffer. Janice stayed out of that feeding frenzy and didn't get bit. Get there, Janice Mutual Funds. There has never been anything like The Sopranos on TV. The greatest work of American popular culture of the last quarter century. Groundbreaking. Brilliant. A phenomenon. Engrossing. First class. Four stars. Perfect. A masterpiece. What's that, a threat? No, Tony, it's a rave review. How are you feeling now? Good, I'm fine. Back at work. <laughs> Sick and tired of losing. Why do you think my father put me in charge, a bullheaded moron? I coach my way. Any given Sunday, life is a contact sport. An Oliver Stone film, rated R, now playing. <laughs> Sega Dreamcast, wired to the net by AT&T. After 45 points between these two teams in the first two quarters, just six in the third. Boise State's first putt of the afternoon. Jeff Edwards on in front formation. Arnold Jackson back deep, chasing it. From the 25, nice little stop and go move across the 35, out near 
the 40-yard line. Opening seconds, fourth quarter. Boise State leading Louisville by three. Why choose between airline miles and hotel points when only Hilton gives you both? It's a fast way to earn a free vacation. It happens at the Hilton. For reservations, call 1-800-HILTONS. Sending the wrong signals? Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. So don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. Looking for a simple weekend getaway? Or the vacation of a lifetime? It happens at the Hilton. For reservations at more than 400 Hiltons worldwide, call 1-800-HILTONS. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of the 1999 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl is presented by Crucial Technology, proud sponsor of the 1999 Humanitarian Bowl, and in part by Selsun Blue Shampoo to help keep your dandruff from sending the wrong signals. It's a lone mallard out there enjoying the Boise River. How'd he survive the hunting season? <laughs> Beautiful country here in Idaho. First down for Louisville. 40-yard line, Cardinal territory. They're down by three. Opening minute, fourth quarter. Moreau, not much. Good penetration initially by Bennett. Malloy wrapped him up through three periods of play here. And there's a look at it. Well, you look at the total yards, and Boise State is dominating, though they don't control the time of possession. And you feel in watching the game that Boise State has really controlled it. But when you look at the scoreboard, and Louisville's one play away from taking the lead. And Louisville has some uh, weapons, to say the least. Out of the shotgun, Redman quickly. Good move made by Parker to make two men miss. And then Damon Bowie brings him down to the 46. A gain on that play of six yards. Nice play, though, by Damian Bowie. Watch as he comes up to try and make the hit on Parker. He misses him right there. He goes down. He doesn't stay down, though. He comes back and makes the tackle right there, knowing that there are a couple of white jerseys in front of Parker to block. It turns out to be a big play. Good move by Green, stumbling his way inside the 40 of Boise State. Down to the 37, Shannar Hartz made the stop. 16-yard gain. I am impressed, Wayne, with the way all of these Louisville receivers are taught to run after the catch. Whether it's Green, whether it's Jackson or Parker, they catch the ball first, but then they stay on their feet. But, Randy, in this kind of passing attack, yards after catch means everything, doesn't it? Well, it has to be when you're throwing their shorter passes, but that doesn't mean it always happens. I have been impressed with their uh, efforts today. Redmond over the middle of El Boyd comes to the four. Got a first down near the 25-yard line. Ross Ferris, a safety, made the stop. 13-yard game. And this is the style of offense Louisville is used to running. They throw a pass to Boyd. They throw a pass to Parker. They throw a pass to Ivan Green. All three of them successful. Now they move the ball from their own 40 down to the Boise State 26-yard line in just three plays. John L. Smith has had a lot of success in this arena over the course of his career as head coach at Idaho. Cardinals trailing by three. First 
down to the 25. Redmond short drop, quick throw. Penalty marker is down. Jackson goes down near the 19 on a gain of roughly six yards. Dempsey Dees with the coverage. The penalty flag came out right as the ball was snapped. It may be against Boise State for lining up offsides. Steve Usick gets it sorted out. Illegal formation on the offense. Not enough players on the line of scrimmage. One of the right receivers should have stepped up onto the line of scrimmage, thought he was in the maybe in a different position and wasn't on the line. That's why the play wasn't stopped, but penalty goes against Louisville. Attention to detail. You know, you get into a rhythm. They've had three successive pass plays, and now you stop yourself with a penalty. Here comes the blitz. Good toss. Ivan Green may go inside the five-yard line. Ivan Green popped wide open. Shenard Hartz ran him down. 28-yard gain to the doorstep of the Broncos. Generally, when you blitz as much as Boise State has, sooner or later it catches up to you. This time, plenty of cushion between Hartz and Green, and Green comes across the field. The best place to run away from man-to-man, -man, catches the ball in full stride. And he looked pretty healthy there on that play. <laughs> tell you what, a little adrenaline do wonders for you, won't it? Two set, two back set now for Louisville. Hardly ever see this. Moreau to the end zone, touchdown, and the Cardinals have the lead. Penalty marker thrown, though, on the far side, so hang on, not so fast. Offside, on a defense, penalty decline, touchdown. Finally, the penalty not against Louisville, against Boise State. They turn it down, a three-yard touchdown run will stand. Well, no surprise when you've got Moreau in the backfield with the ball on the two-yard line, and he's going to get it, but a nice job by that offensive line as Moreau didn't have to maneuver much on his own. Offensive line gives him not only the line of scrimmage, but the end zone, and he gets his 18th touchdown of the season. John Hilbert point after. Louisville Cardinals, 31, Boise State, 27. Opening three minutes, fourth quarter, Frank Burrow over 100 yards and a touchdown. of using a dandruff shampoo. Note how isolated it makes people feel. Note its unpleasant smell, the absence of rich lather. Note its name. Nizorol AD, the world's number one prescribed ingredient for dandruff in non-prescription strength. People can stay dandruff-free by doing this with Nizorol AD only twice a week. Only twice a week. What a pity. Nizorol AD, the freedom will go to your head. This is Boise State University, shaped by its location in one of America's most dynamic small cities, located in the midst of an unsurpassed natural environment. Boise State is a place where students connect to the world around them, from high technology to high culture, where student opportunities abound in an extensive internship program, where students use the great western outdoors as their classroom and as their playground. Boise State University, real education for the real world. Christmas may have passed, but Santa seems to have left a few sacks behind. The Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Clemson, Mississippi State at 7.30, Thursday on ESPN. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, and Mike Gleason back in Boise. Let's take a look at the Bex game summary to this point. We'll have that coming up following the kickoff. We've had two excellent performances by quarterbacks here today in this football game. Seen a lot of yardage and some points on the board, as expected. 58 points between them to this point, with just over 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Here's the 
high kickoff. Forsey makes the catch at the two. Out near the 40-yard line, Brock Forsey, outstanding return once again, Jeff Brunelli made the stop at a touchdown saving tackle, 39-yard return. Here is the Beck scheme summary. Take a look at these two quarterbacks in action, and we've had a lot of yards of this ball game. Well, at least we've had a lot of those either. too. <laughs> Take a look at those are what we expected for the quarterbacks. We expected a lot of yardage and a lot of points in this football game here today. And who's whichever defense could slow the other's offense enough probably make the difference. We did not expect a defensive battle, nor have we had one. Brock Forsey for about five out to the 45-yard line. Wait, I think what you just said is really going to come into play here in this fourth quarter. It's still a one-play game, Louisville up by four. And whichever defense can make a stand or two here, I think stands a, a wonderful chance because both offenses look to at least score some more points if the fourth quarter is going to be any indication of, uh, or if the first three are any indication of what's happened in this fourth. Second and five. Panuki in motion. Hendricks off play action. Nate Colbert makes the catch on the far side, just short of the first down near the 48-yard line. Michael Brown made the stop. Mike Gleason, what do you have for us? Well, when you talk about some of the trials and tribulations of these football teams, some of these Broncos have actually played for four different coaches. Well-documented story, Pokey Allen, the former Bronco coach, died of cancer. Tom Mason uh, took over for him. He was let go. And then Houston Nutt, he spent one year at Boise State before going to Arkansas. And now, of course, uh, Coach Cutter has taken over. So you take a look at Pokey Allen's death and Paul Reyna's death, the freshman we talked about at the top of the broadcast. So these players in the last four years, have lost two people, two people that they care dearly about, Wayne. And they've overcome a lot. It's not easy. Young people grow up in a hurry under those circumstances. Brock Forsey is growing up before our eyes on the field here today. Picks up a tough first down into Cardinal territory, the 49-yard line. And Wayne, I think Dirk Cutter has done a nice job of making his team realize it's not enough to just get here. This is their first ever 1A bowl game, and yet they're not satisfied with just getting here by winning their conference. They, they think they need to win this game. Wide of Jay Swilly. Holman had the coverage on the near side at the Cardinal 40-yard line. Boy, what a nice fake in the backfield by Hendricks. Good job selling the run to the left. Turns around, has plenty of protection in front of him. Look at that passing lane. Receiver makes a nice cut and just outside of Swilly's reach, but the play set up very well, just wasn't executed as well. Second down and 10. Three receivers set, two backs. Four seed. run by Forsey, but take a look at number 52, Richard Harris. Right there, he's got him in his sights and he just can't make contact with him, and then he runs right by Antonio Roundtree. The cornerback breaks that tackle and turns what could have been a small gain into a huge gain. See the career high, 121 yards. That's just rushing. He's had some big plays in the passing game as well. Offensive coordinator Brent Myers wasn't kidding when he thought this kid would play a big role here today. Hendricks trying to drill it into Stahowski. It's incomplete. Second and ten coming up. Nice throw, though, by Hendricks. Was incomplete. Pretty good coverage, though, by Curry Burns. And Hendricks had to throw the ball low and away and count on Stahelski to go down and make a super catch. Either way, though, it wasn't going to be intercepted. Burns playing in place of the injured Courtney Dinkins, who went out in the third quarter with a strained knee, we're told. Second down. Forsey picks his way. 
Sometimes the hole isn't where the play designed said it would be, and you have to read it and cut it back. And he did a nice job there to pick up three yards to the 20-yard line. Wayne, I mean, that's the hardest thing to teach a young back is that vision. That You talk about the feel in the pocket for a quarterback. Young running backs have to have excellent vision. The speed of the college game is so much different than the high school game, which they're used to. Sometimes they see someone who closes in a hurry. I agree with you, though. Forsey seems to have a, a nice knack for feeling that. Coming up on 10 minutes ago in the game, Boise State down by four. They've driven to the Cardinal 20. Hendricks on the slant. Nicely done. fanuki has got a first down near the 11-yard line of Louisville. Well-executed play. Nice throw. Earlier in the game, we saw Boise State down on the 10-yard line. Threw a slant pass behind his receiver, Brian O'Neill. This time, same play, different receiver. Leads Fanuki, hits him in stride, gets him the first down. Football marked at the 12-yard line of Louisville. Boise State on the drive. Bart Hendricks. Play action. Rolls right. Typical West Coast play. Finds the tight end. Misdirection rollout. Everybody going one way. The quarterback rolls the other way. He does not have a blocker in front of him, but that time he found Colbert, the tight end. Defensively, you usually have bigger players, linebackers in here to stop the run. It's harder for those linebackers to catch up with the quarterback or cover a tight end. Now you've got first, uh, second down and three from the five-yard line. This is where Bart Hendricks and that option become so dangerous for Boise State. He scored on an option play earlier today. Pretty good numbers for Hendricks, to say the least. coming. Melifon, touchdown! Just a great call against that defense. You can see the defensive pressure coming from the outside. Louisville was thinking run to the outside, whether it be bootleg or option. Dirk Cutter changed things up. Wonderful hole that time for Malathon to get in there. So Boise State Answers the Louisville touchdown with one of their own to recapture the lead. Kaliakai has it through the uprights. Davey Malathon has been quiet here this afternoon, the leading rusher for Boise State, but he has heard from on uh, this five-yard run to the lead for Boise State in the fourth quarter. In our last exciting Camelback Volkswagen episode, our hippie friends had just traded the old bus for a brand new VW. Let's see what these dudes are up to now. Hey man, fun's fun. Yeah, I know, the duty calls. Volkswagen, the car for active people. Right now, for the first time ever at Camelback Volkswagen, these dudes can get the year 2000 Beetle starting at just 16475 Double life or not, you can't do better than Camelback Volkswagen, where you make the choice and we make it easy. From the tee, Golf in the Southwest is a fast-paced magazine-style show tailored to golf in our region. From prestigious places to play, to celebrities who play this great game, to the latest and greatest innovations, to those making news on the pro side, From the Tee is committed to covering stories that are entertaining and informative. You won't want to miss our exciting new show, From the Tee, every day on The Golf Channel. 2000 approaching, we're trying to make sure the software here at Sports Center is Y2K compliant. Y2K test in three, two, one. Oops. More from the NBA and an NFL trade right after this. We definitely have a few bugs to work out, but we'll be ready. Follow me. Sun Valley Ski Resort, located just two hours north of Boise, the oldest ski resort in the nation. This is where the ski lift was invented, and it's located in the northern Rockies. And uh, I tell you what, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous state and a great place to go skiing. 
Boise State has taken the lead, 34-31, 9.28 left to go on this one. Plenty of time for much more scoring. And I'm sure we'll see much more as the defenses have showed up sparingly today. Take a look here at the touchdown. The run goes to the left, but it's really the backside block right there. Number 79, Keith Dilworth. He seals that backside and gives Malathong a lane to cut back. Beautiful backside block. They've been trying to kick away from Zeke Parker. One of his returns went 91 yards for a score earlier today. So the upbacks have handled the football a little bit more than expected. Brett Thompson trying to place it. High end over end kick floating toward the near side. Parker from the 20. Dancing to the 30. Sideline to the 40. Out of bounds near the 45. So it'll be first down coming up for Louisville. They're going to mark it near the 43. First and 10, 26 yard return by Zeke Parker. Chris Redman, last second instructions from Scott Linehan. You put so much pressure on your defense, facing an offense as explosive as Louisville is. When you give them field position through their special teams over the 40-yard line time and time again. It is he throws, but Ivan Green wide open. They've been a combination since the eighth grade. Chris Redmond to Ivan Green, 20-yard gain, first down. I mean, the difference in this half versus the first half, when Boise State was blitzing, they're getting to Redmond. This time, Shannar Hartz comes off the corner, doesn't get there. It's tough to stay with these receivers man-to-man -man when you're blitzing. If you don't get pressure on the quarterback, Redmond's had more time. Crucial.com, Humanitarian Bowl, Bronco Stadium, Boise, Idaho. Good to have you with us, Wayne Larry. Randy Wright, Mike Leeson on the blue turf of Bronco Stadium. No, that's not a problem with your television screen. Blue turf. Ivan Green has come to the fore here in the second half. Six catches, 97 yards for the game. He had only one catch for 10 yards at halftime. Got a timeout on the field. 9.13 left to go in this one. Boise State at the moment leading 34-31. Just six points scored in the third quarter after a uh, scoring barrage in the first two quarters of the game. Two field goals by Boise State gave them a three-point lead coming in. But in the fourth quarter, things have picked up considerably offensively for both sides. First down, football to the 35. Receiver set for Redmond. Snap through his hands. Redmond able to fall on it, but back near the midfield marker. Brian Johnson got there for the Broncos to wrap him up. 16-yard loss. Boy, that was huge. And it's been a problem all day as Redmond has been back in the shotgun, feeling bad snaps throughout the day. This time, not as bad as some of the snaps have been. Just Redmond just doesn't watch it all the way into his hands, and it goes right between his knees. Redmond, the only Louisville Cardinal back there that could fall on that ball, grabs it, and even though it was a 16-yard loss, it's only second down now. They've got three downs if they choose to pick it up. Redmond stumbled as he went back. Frank Moreau, undercut move by Shenard Hart. Brings him down to the 38-yard line. Gain of 11 yards. Nice choice by Redmond to dump the ball out to Moreau, knowing he'd have plenty of room going against his own defense. Don't try and get it all on that play. They picked up quite a bit. Now it's only third and 14. And if they choose, even if they don't get the first down, they could be in field goal range. Third and 14. The Boise fans come to their feet. Intended for Lavelle Boyd, who wanted a pass interference penalty. McKeish Brooks had the coverage downfield, along with the linebacker Kareem Williams in the vicinity. And it's fourth down for Redmond and company. Wayne, I think Lavelle Boyd has got a legitimate argument there. That is a deep crossing route. Clearly was contact made earlier, and with some of these interference calls we've seen, 
This could have been another one. You see the contract not as well from that angle, but I think Boyd's got a legitimate right. That incompletion into the streak of six straight completions for Redmond. He's facing fourth down at about 13. And a timeout taken by Louisville. 7.46 left to go in this one. Boise State leading by three. Louisville coming up on a fourth down. So, so I had fun. I had fun. <laughs> That's how I call you. Yeah, okay. Well. Well. Hey. Next time I'll remember to bring enough cash for both of us. Next time, use the Visa check card instead of cash. It's fast, easy, and accepted everywhere Visa is. So you can get what you need and get on with life. Hello. That's funny. I didn't order a pizza. <laughs> it's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. Oh, nice toppings. And food. Dude, are you going to cut that pizza or what? For fresh baked pizza at home, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. A significant discovery in eye health may be lutein, a nutrient found in these healthy foods. Now Centrum has the only leading multivitamins with lutein to help maintain your precious sight. Centrum, Centrum Silver, now more complete with lutein. While many of you have been making plans for the eve of the next millennium, we at Zales have been making sure you have something to wear. At Zales stores or shop online at Zales.com. When last we talked, Louisville was going to go for it on fourth down. They changed their mind. Chris Savori out in punt formation to try to pin the Broncos deep. Gets a low snap. Just did get that kick away. Schilling puffs it. And gets it back near the 14-yard line. Wayne, I think that's a good decision to punt there. You're only down by three. You only have the one timeout left. You punt the ball. You, you try and come up with a defensive stop. And knowing you only need a field goal, you're still in the game. You don't make it. You give Boise State field position at the 40-yard line. I think that's a good call to punt that. Well, this Boise crowd has really come to the fore in the fourth quarter. And Coach Dirk Cutter mentioned that his players were responsible for keeping the home forces, the crowd, of the game. And people from, from outside this area will be surprised at how loud the stadium is. And, and the, the crowd will definitely play in our favor as long as we give them something to cheer about. And our players know that that's their responsibility to get the crowd in the game and also to, to keep the crowd in. First down, football just short of the 15-yard line. Forsey has run hard all day. This time out near the 20-yard line on a gain of almost six yards. Rashad Harris, the linebacker, responded for Louisville. This is a new record here for Boise State. Today, 501 yards of offense, a bowl game record. Forsey, 130 of those yards on 18 carries. Second down. Forsey again. First down the 26-yard line. Michael Brown made the stop. And they are starting to open up and gash this Louisville defensive front seven. Forsey running right over the middle of his line. The center, Scott Huff and Jeremy Mankins. Watch the cut right there. Almost a full speed cut. Goes right by the linebacker, Harris. And when you can make cuts going full speed like that, you're going to be falling forward and give yourself the first down. Take a look at the timeout situation. Just one now for Louisville. Boise State all three of theirs in the second half. First down. Forsey picks the right hole again. Close to the first down. My, has he run well here today. Corey Wallace made the stop. 
Here's something we didn't expect from Boise State, and that was this kind of a potent running attack, Randy. But what a time to run the football. Leading by three with just over six minutes to go in the game. And the defense knows you're going to try and take some time off the clock. Figures you're going to be running it. Louisville's been in good position the last couple of plays, so they just missed some tackles. That was the problem. John L. Smith outlined to Mike Gleason at halftime that he wanted to see better tackling from his defense. If you're quicker than the other team, you get in position faster, but you still got to make the tackle. First down to the 37. Four seat, the spin move. You got him about three yards. Michael Brown was there. Second and seven coming up. Under six minutes to go in the game, and Boise State trying to protect a three-point lead. Not as though Forsey has not had any work this year. Even though he's a redshirt freshman, he came in with 75 carries to his credit. So it's not as though this is totally unfamiliar territory to him, though he hadn't had the kind of success throughout, coming in with only 313 yards on the ground. He rushed for 91 yards, Randy, in the win over Eastern Michigan much earlier this season. But today he is primed. Second and seven. Again, number 36, Brock Forsey moves the pile and drives it to the 42, a gain of a couple of yards, leaving a third down and five yards to go coming up for Boise State. Clearly, this would ordinarily be a passing down for Boise State, but you could argue that on every play. Now it looks as though they may slow things down a little bit as Hendricks is going over to the sideline, gets the play, and comes in, want to take as much time off the clock as they can. Would be surprised to see him put it up in the air right here, though. First down, more important to keep control of that ball. Time winding down on the play clock. There it is in the left-hand corner of your screen. The naked bootleg rollout. Got the tight end, Dave Sahelski. This drive will continue to the midfield marker. Curry Burns made the stop on the play. Eight-yard gain. Such a dangerous play when you've got a quarterback that moves like Hendricks and a tight end like Stahelski that can run after the catch. When you're trying to cover a man-to-man -man with a free safety, you've got to come up and, and cover him in much tighter coverage. When you only need five yards, you can't be off eight. John L. Smith realizes now he's got to start taking some chances on D. Yep. He's got to force something to happen. Coming up on four minutes to go on this one. Double tights on the line for Boise State. They move the fullback, Shea Swan, and go that way with Brock Forsey. And Forsey is hammered down on the play by Devon Thomas, who came like a missile to knock him down. Nice, nice play by Thomas. A very enthusiastic, has got good speed, hadn't played a lot this year because of injury, but he started last year as just an 18-year-old, a, a younger player, started this season and was only 18 years old, he's grown up a little bit as the season has gone on, and they think he will be a heck of a player next year and the years to come. Louisville finished 79th in the nation in rush defense, giving up 166.5 yards a game, and it shows here today. Hendricks able to get away and pick up some yardage down near the 47-yard line. A gain of three on that play. Justin Thomas made the stop. Boy, got to be very, very frustrating for these Louisville rushers. Timeout is taken on the field. Three Louisville players down, getting up very slowly. Metamac, two of them stay down. Again, Hendricks just does a marvelous job of feeling the pressure, stepping up in the pocket, and avoiding the sack. See if we can catch this towards the end. As we see here, Hendricks step up. Watch number 17, Otis Floyd. He's got it by the face mat. Let's go, but holds on to it. Nice job of discipline on Floyd not to hold on to that face mask and give up the penalty in the first down. Meanwhile, a couple of Cardinals still down on the field. And coming up January 2nd, the BCS continues on ABC. Quarterback Aaron Crouch and the Cornhuskers take on the Volunteers. Number three, Nebraska against number five, Tennessee. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl live, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. All part of Super January on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Tennessee coming off of their national championship year last year. Doesn't have the chance to defend, but that looks like it could be a heck of a game with Nebraska. It just seems every year Nebraska is up right around there, aren't they? Indeed. 
Donovan Arp was uh, one of the injured players along with Devon Thomas. And they are getting up very groggy. So this Louisville defensive front, Randy, has been battered in more ways than one. And, and Wayne, that's a good point. Mentally, it's very frustrating when you're a defensive lineman. You beat your blocker, you get back to the pocket, and you can't get the quarterback down. Very frustrating. And I think you're seeing a little frustration as they come off the field under their own power. If there is a deep portion of the defense for Louisville, it would be on the line. They play eight men. Rotate him in on a regular basis. Third down coming up here, about seven yards to go. 47-yard line, Cardinal territory. The Louisville defense needs a stop. Three minutes left to go in the football game. Louisville has just one timeout remaining. Third down call here for Hendricks. Hendricks rolls it, takes it himself going to get there. Able to reach it to the 45-yard line. Holman put him away in the end. So it'll be fourth down for Boise State. Nice job by Jeremy Collins, number 53, coming over to make the hit. Here you see Hendricks goes back. He gets out of that pocket awfully quick. Didn't have to get out of there. And watch the hit right there coming on by Jeremy Collins. Hendricks keeps going. And you, know, you can't withstand many of those hits. <laughs> Takes a hit and keeps on licking, huh? Uh, he's, uh, he's glad it's fourth down now. He's sitting over there on the side. Yeah. Jeff Edwards in punt formation. Hangs it up high. And did they keep it in play? Yes, they did. First down, Louisville inside the one. I think we're going to see the, the, the Bronco that came into the end zone and out of the end zone. I thought that was the same one that caught the ball, which would be a touchback, but maybe yep. it was another one that got it because they're going to mark it there at the one-yard line. If Louisville is to get the lead and win this football game with a minute 51 to go and one timeout remaining, they'll have to go 99 yards. Take a look at 87 Davison. He's in the end zone. And he's the one that comes out and touches the ball. If you go into the end zone and break that plane, you're not supposed to be able to come back out. First down for Louisville. Moreau to the sidelines. Out of bounds of the five and a gain of four. Hearts, the safety, came up to make the hit. Well, is there any better way for Chris Redmond to end his career? Minute 46 left in a wonderful career, knowing they need a field goal to tie, 99 yards to go. Redmond from his end zone. Arnold Jackson cut down. Kareem Williams got enough of them to trip him up across the 10. At the 11-yard line, should be enough for the first down, depending on the spot of the ball. Keep in mind, even though Louisville only has one timeout left, with the clock stopping at every first down, it will at least give Louisville a chance to gather themselves, get to the line of scrimmage, and call a play. Shouldn't really affect Boise State, though, because the way they know huddle on defense, that's their normal routine. Plays are signaled in. They can change their plays, call their signals, so they don't even have to worry about being in the no huddle. They always are. Just in case they get into field goal range. John Hilbert wants to be ready. Louisville first down at the 11-yard line. Cardinal territory. A minute 40 remaining in the game. Boise State by three. Once again, just one timeout left for Louisville. A low snap. Redmond. Arnold Jackson. Out to the 20-yard line. A gain of nine. It'll be a second and two coming up. Sasser made the stop for Boise State. Boise State will be more than content to let Louisville catch the shorter pass plays, playing a soft zone, keeping the receivers in front of them, and only pick up six or seven, eight yards at a crack with just over a minute 20 to go. Arnold and Boyd at the top of your screen. Redmond looking the other way. Intended 
for Ivan Green, the pass overthrown. Green underneath the coverage of the defensive lineman Mike Malloy. And it'll be a third down coming up. Third and one for Louisville. Well, you want to get as many yards as you can, as quickly as you can, but you do need the first down. So third and one if Louisville decides to run the ball here. Hawk would stop with the first down, but then they got to get right back to the line. Of course, you're in four down territory from here on out. Absolutely. Third and one. Redmond looking to make a play. Takes it on his own and dives across the 20-yard line to get the first down near the 23. Dove underneath the tackle attempt of Brian Johnson, the linebacker. First down for Louisville with 64 seconds remaining in the game. At this point, Wayne, now they've got a little cushion from their own goal line. They need to open things up more, start throwing the ball 12, 15, 18 yards downfield and get yardage in bigger chunks. Under a minute remaining. Out of the shotgun. Redmond floats it over the middle. Accepted by Kareem Williams. a game of emotion. A very distinct emotion. Well, we've seen Redmond under pressure all day. He sees the blitz coming right up the middle, stands in there as long as he can. It's that zone blitz where Boise State can draw back. Williams can read the quarterback the whole way. A nice call and executed perfectly. The emotion of Boise State. 32 seconds away, time winding down. And a humanitarian bowl victory, and of course the tremendous disappointment. The emotional letdown on the Louisville sideline. Final 16 seconds, Louisville is not gonna stop the clock. They have one timeout remaining, and that is it. Congratulations to Dirk Cutter and the Boise State Broncos, champions of the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Final score from Boise, the Broncos 34.